Ahoy, wonders, and welcome back to the table. There you go. <laughs> Tech Cam's no longer there. Oh. Get away. You'll, you'll see that later. Ah, uh, so we're here, we're back, we're in the middle of a massive, sprawling forest on yes. top of a mm -hmm. spirous mountain. The uh, deep dark. Yeah. The dark wood which is said to be the last remnants of any Feywild that is on the actual mountain that the Acropolis is built around. So you guys are at the very tip of the mountain. Yeah, that's where I'd build my home. Seems like a safe place. Near yeah. the space where dangerous CR3 dragons live. <laughs> World ending. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Well, last we left our heroes, uh, we left off in a fight with some Fey Spiders uh, and one of the last few things that won you guys that fight is Dagon injected, I believe, it was the green serum? The uh, growth hormone, the blue one. Oh, uh, the blue one. The Excellent. green one would have murdered her, if I'm correct, because that's <laughs> the one that burned that my mouth. Like acid. Yeah, yeah. All Liquid right. blight. All right. Do, do, do. Uh, I'm going to throw some fun stuff at you guys. So when last we left this off, uh, the combat's over, by the way. Combat is completely over. There's a treasure chest that one of the beans actually transported from the game house into the middle of mm, the entire right. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, one, one question I was going to have at the end of this combat, are any of the spiders still, you know, relatively full-bodied? Oh, you mean like after like squishing yeah, them? Or yeah, yeah. Are there any? Are there any dead? Are there any corpses, perhaps? Taxidermiable. Uh, hmm. There's probably one. All right, we will. Uh, uh, for for lack of better transportation, we'll have Jillian carry that for now. <laughs> well, speaking of Jillian, she hasn't stopped growing. She keeps growing. All right. Well, uh, Dagon's still just kind of sitting on her shoulder Art. as the giant bird keeps getting bigger. Uh, so she's not a bird. She turned back into a human oh. at this point. Well, he's sitting on her shoulder, then Iron, iron she, Giant style. She's looking left and right, kind of confused, like, I'm not doing this. She, wh someone stop this. What's going on? I'm going to... Eloy's going to pull out of his pack. He's got a potion of diminution that he's had for a while. Uh, th this might help. It's a it's a shrinky potion. What? Miss <laughs> Jillian, would you... Would you like to try? I, I got no better ideas, ma'am. Smash Shoot. it on her ankle. <laughs> <laughs> what if it needs to be adjusted? All right. Uh, oh, one quick second. No. I need to fix my little setup here. Uh, I need you to roll me a 1D100. Sounds like fun. On, let me get my other percentile die out of here. And uh, Dagon, I need you to roll me an investigation check. Hmm, you have a mole. <laughs> Like a literal living mole in your skin. <laughs> uh, investigation is a 16. 16. Uh, <clears throat> the pretty, you know how like Jillian, like she was like, had a little bit of plant growing off her. Like most of it was in her hair. Most of it was flesh. At this point, most of her skin is getting covered over like it's bark. And this doesn't look like it's going very well. This looks like she's aging rapidly and rapidly and rapidly to the point where this oak looks withered on her skin. Oh, I thought she was mm. just going, oh, natural. Uh, I'm gonna hope high is good because that's a 91. Mm. Okay. Uh, roll your percentiles. Now let me check these <laughs> dice. Yeah. No. I I I, ro I wrote up a whole bunch of shit for this. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well. Let me l at least read this out, and then I might have to ask that the uh, camera be focused on me for a few seconds. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, not yet. We will in a second. Uh, what's happening is is that Jillian takes the potion that you have, and it does stop her. All right. For about 10 seconds before she continues to keep growing, and not so much in the height sense, but so much in that more of that bark is growing like around where her shoulders are and down her spine. She's clutching her stomach, looking like she's about to throw up, and the back of her spine is starting to jut. With my fancy new gloves that give me a good check for nature, I'm going <laughs> to try to see if I can discern what is happening. Go for it. Fancy gloves, don't fail me now. I'm normally so dumb, but <laughs> does a 15 do anything for me? <laughs> I will say this. Uh, this magical little green thumb of yours, you <clears throat> somehow get like a little bit of a vision of like, hmm, why... Why would plants be doing this in this circumstance? Oh, that's right, because uh, growth hormones in any sort of plant is almost akin to like saying, hey, in the next five days, why don't you like jump up a couple of years in age? Okay. So it's just that's that's the plant maturing. equivalent. So you're pretty much 
fast forwarding time for a plant when you give it a uh, feeder like of that of that nature. So that's essentially what you just did to Jillian. However, this part's kind of completely fucking different. Like you would have figured the plant part of her would probably be a lot more flourished or a lot more larger. No, this is not this is not what you're thinking this should have happened to at the first part. Uh the gr what? Yep. Yeah, yeah we lost uh, we lost oh, camera, no. but we should still be fine on audio for now yeah. at least. Oh, okay. It's weird because it's on the previews. Yeah, looking... just keep yeah, just keep yeah. going. We'll... Keep going. Okay. The the growth that's growing on her back, where all this bark is condensing, uh, you're starting to see celestial symbols grow on the side of them. Okay. And it's starting to sprout up, almost like something is like a literal sproutling is coming out of the back of her, but. Her face completely starts to turn white, and her, her eyes are going from, like, with the pupils to just straight, just white-eyed. Hmm. At this point, you watch as the front of her body Oop, starts it to... came back, Tyler. Oh. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, okay. It was the switch. The front of her body, uh, body starts to shrink and suck inside, like, even more, so the plant is pushing upwards. Uh, the plant... Opens up, shows a blossoming flower, almost like the same ones you guys saw at the flower shop. All right, uh, one quick second here. Uh, it, the flower opens up and reveals an eye. This is Jillian's character sheet. Oh no. Oh, she's. Hi, we have fun here at TFS at the table. I'd like to let you all know that sometimes in a game of chance where you roll the dice and it's magical and whimsy, sometimes shit happens and your favorite character ends up dying. Oh no! Don't let it get to you. It's a video. It's a game. You almost said video game. It's almost. I almost <laughs> okay. said video game. So Dagon's sitting here at the top of Beanstalk Jillian. Uh, the eye is now looking down at you. Okay. First of all, I did not know that was going to happen. When you say that. <laughs> What happens is, is you actually see, like, vapors of that, si like, almost the same color as the uh, serum that you injected into her, opens up into vapors, it spreads up, and the mist absorbs it. Okie dokie, that's oh, new. Oh, that is not good. Everything okay up there? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's complicated. Complicated is the word I shall use. There's a lot of grooves that you could climb her down her without any incident. Um... I'd recommend you come down from there. I, I, uh, yes, but one moment, please. Uh, I go up to the eyeball and I just look at it. Uh, you're at the base of the root right now, so you're sitting on top of her spine, like kind of like hunched over, like in a fetal position. Yeah. You're at the base of the flower, and the flower's like looking down at you. It has the etchings around it, and it says in celestial in the etchings, it's celestial for defense. Well, Jillian. I ask at the eyeball. The eyeball does not respond. I say it in celestial. It 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 just says it replies back to you in defense of the seraphim. All right, not Jillian, gotcha. Uh, I'm going to bear this on my conscience for a bit. Well, <sighs> time to be hitting the old dusty trail. <laughs> About, um, did Jillian have, like, any jewelry or anything on? Uh, <laughs> any, any material item she would have had would have fell off at her at the base. So, either she's stepping on top of them, or they're littered around the floor. I'm gonna just gonna go down now. You Roll an athletic have... check. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> uh, that is a 22. A twenty-two? Yeah, you make it down with no incident whatsoever. So, good news and bad news. Good news, the spiders are all gone. Oh, thank God. Bad news. Well, actually, no. Slightly more uh, tertiary good news. Okay. Um, saved you a little bit of money. Bad news is I don't think Jillian's coming back with us. Is, what, like she's stuck here? I uh, see that flower up there. That sort of sprouted out of her, and uh, this this formula, which I assumed would, you know, heal her as a plant, and this thing seems to be good for plants. It yeah. uh, may have done a little more harm than good with the celestial energies within it, and the celestial nature of the grounds on which we stand. And she's not there anymore. I see. 
with a 23 in performance. Ezra puts on a very brave face and a big smile. Well, that sounds awful, but I'm sure it's going to turn out okay. I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. Maybe she just needs a little bit more time. Maybe this thing will gestate, get out of her system, it'll be fine. Rolling an insight for Charlotte. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please, continue. Okay. Dagon, I... You, uh... You don't need to feel bad. You did everything you thought you could. We were in a dire situation, and things happened. This is a situation I've been through before. I am not excited, nor pleased. Jillian was a... Sweet girl, and now she is a massive angel flower that will try to kill us, I am assuming, if we... The flower is not, uh, it is looking down upon you guys, but it's not reacting, like, you don't feel any aggression towards you. She'll be defending this land for a long time, I feel. What's this role? Insight. Insight. Uh, insight against what? Just trying to read, oh, just trying oh, to read through him. Land on the side. Seeing if, uh, if he can tell that 15. I, I've realized things have gone very badly, but I don't want my crew freaking out right now. No, he's Captain's putting on a brave face right now. He's pretty. He's he he's might got, be a sociopath. <laughs> no, <laughs> he seems so. No, Captain's, Captain's got a firm grip on this shit. And with Jillian and with uh, Charlotte's role, she's like looking to your words right now for wisdom. Re regardless of what Jillian's ultimate fate ends up being, she wouldn't want us to be standing around terrified and panicked if something has gone wrong. The best we can do is keep moving forward. Hopefully if we solve this missed celestial problem, maybe we can do some sort of reversal on on what's happened to her, but do you, uh, plan... we'll never know staying here. Did you, uh, did you tell everyone what happened to Jillian when the flower erupted? Or is that information you're gonna keep to yourself? I, I, I how much of it were they able to see? They pretty much could have seen everything, unless like there's anything in particular you want to leave like, out. Like, did she have any final words that she uttered? The only things they could, they saw the mist fly out of it. That was you guys can yeah. tell it's the same color. You've never seen the thing before. Mm -hmm. Neither has Charlotte, so you and her are completely blank on this at that point. But pretty much, you just watched as the same serum that he injected into her just got evaporated into the mist, and the mist took it. Can I? Captain, just just in case this is it, can I have a moment to say a few words? Absolutely, Eloy. I, I'm very glad you volunteered. Old Lady Big Rock Mountain, we don't have a prayer for this. This is <laughs> this is a new one on me. Amen. But <laughs> I mean, there's less blood and broken bones than usual, so I'm I'm gonna take this one as a as a step in the right direction. So, so thank you, I guess, old lady Big Rock Mountain. This is how I hope most people die, lady Big Rock Mountain. Thank you very much. <laughs> Didn't seem to be suffering too much, though she will be in a fetal position for the rest of the foreseeable eternity. <laughs> uh, that's all I got. I'm, I'm bad at this. Well spoken, Eloy. But I, thank you. I thought it was important they, to try. The words were wonderful, and I'm sure she'd appreciate them. You watch as Charlotte kind of like taps you on the shoulder, like aimlessly. She's still looking at Jillian. She's holding her hand out. I reach out my hand to the Charlotte. serum. Show me the glass. I show her the glass that the serum can, was contained in. She takes it. I'll be looking forward to investigating what just happened in a few mom in a, a few moments when all this is said and done. Please do. I have a lot of things to speak to Vlasimith at the end of this day. Well, Jillian, just understand that obviously no. Uh, ill will, Charlotte. Or Charlotte, sorry. Uh, Charlotte, understand that there was no ill will intended for Jillian or anything. It's just I. No, I, we've joined this company knowing that danger is possible, and I've heard stories, even from Mr. Kowalski, that things like this can happen. The adventuring life, while fun and very glamorous, can also have very brutal and strange ways of ending. If it makes you feel any better, I know it feels better for me. Chick didn't eat anything up there, hey. so her soul isn't trapped for all eternity in the stomach of the all gobbler. This Vathanir. He sounds sleepy as shit. This man. I'm not sure how to feel about this, frankly. Mm. <laughs> she will take the serum. Uh, she takes the serum bottle and she looks to you. Do you have any more? Well, I guess this isn't exactly the time to be holding back now. Ezra presents the the four vials he has. 
My only request is that you let me keep one. You can take these to examine all you need. I only need one for what I want to do. And my request is you don't use them on any of the crew members. Absolutely. You have my word. He hands she, her the three. All right. She takes the accelerant and she takes the depressant. She will look into these the moment you guys are in a safe location. She, uh, at this point, you guys are just a few clicks away from the location of the tower, which is to the north of here. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte is taking this moment to say a prayer as she leans, uh, she takes a knee and starts like muttering to herself. Uh, she holds up one of her, she holds up one of her journals, like one of her navigation journals and like holds it out and like shows a blank page and her words, as she's speaking a prayer, starts writing into it. Like in a very nice calligraphical script. Uh, she doesn't look like she's gonna be moving anytime soon unless you guys wanna keep going. Uh, Dagon's gonna take this time to pack up that one spider that is uh Survival check. Well, I'm just taking the whole body. The whole oh, said there might be one. We yeah. didn't, we gotcha. never confirmed. Gotcha, uh, survival check. 17. 17. Let me roll for that. Okay, nice. Uh, it looked like there was a piece of the entire, uh, is it the abdomen that's the back end of the spider? I forget. That sounds right. Spinnerets and stuff, I'm not yes, really yeah, sure. It is. Yes, it is, okay. So I am right, thank you. Uh, the abdomen of one of the spiders that Jillian stepped on is sticking out from the foot. Uh, with an, with enough precision and enough, like, of your carving know-how, you're able to actually take out the entire back end of it completely. Uh, I needed the whole thing, because that's what the crazy forest hag wanted. I need the whole animal. She said as much as you could give, uh, not the whole enough. thing. But you pretty much have the entire abdomen. The, uh, the silk sacks are being kept in there. And also, you pretty much carved an ethereal spider. That's pretty fucking high quality. You are, you pretty much carved out a perfect piece of a ghost spider. Uh, we can go deliver this back to, uh, Miss Giggle Splinters. Uh, also, is this, this, this chest here, that's hers, right? She'll probably want that returned. Yes, but I'm not sure she knows it's gone. Maybe we shouldn't mention anything until we go see her. I was gonna say, hold off on opening it until we see her and leave. It might be best if you don't go. She does seem quite keen in harvesting you. You know what? That's fair. I am fine waiting outside. <laughs> I mean, most of, the, most of the stuff that she had hanging off the walls was all fey creatures, especially fey people. Yeah, outside hmm. with the bear. You know what? Nope. I'll, I'll handle the bear. <laughs> As one of the few traveling members of this crew that is not fey, I'll you, you've claimed the corpse. I, I'll, as your captain, I'll walk in and, and you see you through. You are not Faye. <laughs> oh, that, that face you gave me says otherwise of the idea of you going inside, though. I know, it's just like, yeah, I'm say, an say elephant. Back, say back to Ezra. <laughs> yeah, she did seem quite pleased with you. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. I feel like we had a bit of a we rapport a going. good bargain here. I know it's not a full animal, yeah. but I think she'll do well with I it. I like the idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone else can roll in a, a survival as well. You That was just your role. You could... Probably, like, if everyone else wants to combine efforts, you could probably find something, I'll too. I'll see what I can find. Mm -hmm. What's a 14 say? 14? Uh, one, oh, of the he one of the heads is kind of bruised and battered, but you can pop out a couple of eyes. Actually, I'm way wrong. I, I did an invest or, uh, investigation bonus, not a, mm -hmm. a survival bonus. That's an 18. Okay, it's, oh, an 18. Yes. Yeah, you could probably get, like, four spider eyes. Yeah, now hand her these and see what she thinks of them. Nice juggling. Juggling, juggling four. Oh, God. Spider eyes. I got an eight. Eloy picks up a piece of the pumpkin that exploded. If I can, like, dry this and cure it, maybe Timothy will want it. There you go. Pumpkin jerky. <laughs> There's always something. I want to go over to where um, Jillian is and do a perception perception check around the area. All right, See well, shall we, Captain? Anything. Alrighty. As nobody uh, else is interesting, Ezra and Dagon will just pop back. So, modified 20. Modified 20. Uh, 
Well, I really shouldn't have done this, but... <laughs> <laughs> Oops. It was very oh. dramatic, but... Yeah. Looking, looking for her belongings. Oh, yeah. it's right... <laughs> right here. Do, 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 do. All right, you find a... You find a club, a... Which, uh, basically a shillelagh. You find a shillelagh, a dagger, and... Do, 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 do. Ah, one healing potion. No personal belongings or anything? Uh, personal like that. attachments that you could have found on her. Uh, they're pretty much. Mm, let's see. Doing this for. How yeah, much yeah, of a family reasons. did Jillian leave behind? Yeah, well, hold on. Let me just roll something here. If you're looking for like something personal, I thought you were looking for like belongings. I think he wants to make like a grave site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you find. You pretty much find it's not gonna be anything like super huge. It's just right. a button from her overalls that she was wearing. Mm. It had a little bit. Of, it had an autumn leaf engraved on it. Okay, that works. So, I put her. I put a lot of her belongings there as like a grave site, and I take the button and I go over to Charlotte, and I give her the button. It seems that you. We're closer to her than most of the rest of the crew. I thought it would be appropriate if you had something that belonged to her. She, you watch her hand trembling, takes the button out of your giant, massive hand, paw, whatever we're gonna call it. Hoof. Hoof, there you go. Your hoof fingers. <laughs> <laughs> she takes the button, she's like biting the bottom of her lip, she's drawing blood, like how much she's trying to keep all this shit composed in her. As she like, just, finishes up her book and she looks to you and she gives you like just a very strong nod and thanks. Pats her shoulder softly. She like, she like jitters a bit and then looks to see where everyone else walked off to. I have a job to do. Yes, as do we all. So you guys wanted to head back to the we, game house? We were heading back to Giggle Splinters. We're gonna all right. Show her what we got. Whoop. The bear is pressed up against the window, sliding as you guys go past it. <laughs> hey. Hello. <laughs> Just mushy face holding in like, the glass. Yep. Holding a, <laughs> holding a massive spider ass over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> you guys open the door. It's sitting there with its arms folded on its hind legs looking at you. We bring presents. From behind the counter. There she yes. is. <laughs> What have you? What have you brought to the game house? Oh well, I found uh, we, we found a horde of massive teleporting spiders over there. I thought you might like pieces of them. Just a little bit of webbing comes out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> a, a tiny one just leaves. <laughs> Step on it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Look at this. We got another one. This is good. You see, you've kind of caught me in a little bit of a bad time right now. You see, one of my... Uh, so I, I heard something in, in the back was gone, and I did some thorough checking, maybe some rodents or rats or something. I have absconded with one of my gifts to anyone who brings me something! But I, I'm sure I'll find it in time. Anyway, now is the time for the present. Let's see, this nice lump of spider you've given me. Mm, she, like... She crushes her head on top of it, and it's like just shoots web all over the place. <laughs> yeah, Dagon just sits straight faced. She just like grabs. She starts grabbing the silk and going through it. Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. This would be very good trappings indeed for a net. You've ever seen a silken spider net? Well, now imagine it with a blink spider. Yes, I walked through several feet of it out there, actually. Mm, yes. I'll be a uh, new new hair for Giggle Splinters tonight. Anyway. Yes, wonderful. <laughs> I, I, I suppose I should give you a chest, yes. Yes, for, for your efforts. And you, these fine eyes. You couldn't get me all of them, though, unfortunately. I, I know. Spiders I have... have man. She like She, like, counts on her fingers, and, like, she has two fingers missing. So, literally, she does this to you. Spiders have this many, yes? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's somewhere around there, I think. I don't know. It's a fair amount, but th there was a... I'm sorry, that gag was far too fucking easy. <laughs> th there was a bit of damage that went through as we, uh, 
These were all we could salvage. I'm, I'm afraid we... So, so she's got this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, it's this many. Oh, that sounds about right. <laughs> yes, about... Closer to the total. Unfortunately, uh, blunt trauma may have destroyed the, the remaining eyes of this creature, but this was what we were able to... What I was able to salvage. Well, you all did fine in getting me... Now, where, by the way, where's, where's your horse friend? Is, uh, he, is he dead? Tra is... Tragically consumed by the spiders. Tragically. Deception. One of my best stats. The 19 on the die and a eight. That is a 27. You are so fucking lucky. She got a 25. <laughs> Ooh, it's my best. One of my best stats. Yep. Oh, Dagon's a, a liar. Damn shame. I would have loved some venison stew for dinner. Yes, I'm afraid case. it's full of. I teleported to the spider dimension. She kind of just like hobbles on into the back. Do you hear like shoving like? <gasps> <gasps> everything, everything okay back there? It's fine. The giggle split. This is fine. Just, 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 you just fix it up the old spine for some pushing. I'll, I'll get, I'll get you your gifts in a second, dearie. Ooh, as a chest comes out the side. Well, don't hurt yourself. Oh, there's a pile of three different chests that she offers to you. They're, they're all the same color. Same one as outside. It's a metal box with a small lock on the front of it. And she like she presents the three of them to you as she like fixes her back. Hmm, my lumbago. Pick one. Your call, Captain. Oh, well. It's like one, one on the bottom left, one on the top, and one on the bottom right. Eeny, meeny, miny, the one on the right. Mm, yes, hold on a second. And she just like, she holds up her arm. <laughs> and fucking punches the one on top off. Fonzie's it open? Yeah, she Fonzie, and she Fonzie's the other one open. Here you are. Thank you. Let me roll. Where is my... Do to do. Here they are. <gasps> you find the corp. You find ha the half upper torso of a Luxodon corpse inside, and completely around the entire body is a case full of rubies. Oh, I'm not sure about the ornamentation. We may need to hide that, but. Uh... Mm. But the rest of these look... Thank you very much. I mean, I'd hate for it to go to waste. Yeah, absolutely. 2,000 rubies. All right, cool. Go ahead and add that to your... I will add a Luxodon torso to my inventory. <laughs> uh, if you want to carry that out, you're going to have to roll an athletic check because that thing is huge. Uh... You're, so think think like Minotaur-sized upper right. torso. Let's see. You have like a bag you can put you in said, You said it's like a... Is, is it like a... Just the torso, or does it also have the head? It's got the head. It's the it's upper like torso. The trunk. Half. I will take the trunk. Luxodon trunk. Roll me an investigation check, Ezra. Because Dagon would not know this. I'm I'm scooping the the rubies in. I don't think I'm going to notice and much of that either. Six. Uh... Well, you will notice that the entire chest cavity of this, like, there are rubies in the chest cavity, so you have to dig in there. Okay. But it's split open down the middle, like, surgically. So... Okay, so, like, the, the Luxodon's yes. chest is... Uh, From the throat down to the chest. So it seems just very surgically cut. Yep. Yo, dog, I heard you like chess, so I put a chest in this chest. <laughs> and then there's rubies up in that chest. <laughs> That's not part of the meme, it's just what you get. It's what you get, no. <laughs> Dayon holds the trunk up over his nose. What do you think, too much? Mm. You know? It's a little... Just a well, little I just bit. lean in through the... <laughs> peering through the window. How long is this trunk? Uh, probably a... If you hold it up to your forehead, it reaches down to the floor. I am. I got wow. a new belt. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any rubies or anything else in the trunk? I mean, I got the the investigation check. He told me that the that the chest was cut open quite prettily. Not catching anything else in there, though. At least, not that I've been told. Well, that was oh. your hint, unfortunately. Yeah. I'll have this you. made later. I'm gonna fold it up and put it in my satchel for now. Cool. Uh, have it made somewhere where people don't worship fucking elephants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, Madam Giggle Splinters is just sitting there. 
hope you enjoyed it. If you come back with even more spoils, I'll give you something better. Ah, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if you do find my other chest that was stolen away, if you happen to just give it back to me, I might reward you with something else. Ooh, something excellent. something that little fellow up there. You, the, teeth, the, the teeth, like the, uh, the gnome that's hanging upside down, splayed open. His wasn't big. His present wasn't very well suited for the game house chess, but I'd be willing to part ways with it with you if you were to give back what was stolen from me. So you'd give me him for the... No, not him. He's a prize collection now. He gave me quite a fuss. Bouncer had a real fun time trouncing him. Isn't that right, fella? Right behind you is the bear. Good job, Bouncer. Nice. Your work is, uh, quite exceptional. Well, you, we'll... Look back to giggle, you look back to Giggle Splitters, you look back to Bouncer. Thumbs up. We'll try to keep our eyes out for it. Oh, that's good. Remember, you just, as long as there's more bodies to find, you can give them to me and I'll give you something in return. Oh, you are wonderful. <laughs> Her nose falls off. Mine. Oh, um, I'd offer you mine, but it's in a bag. Oh, no, don't worry. I got like six of them. She pulled, She lo- walks over to another, per- like an elf that's hanging off the wall. Hmm. Suits you. Hmm. All right, we'll be uh, on our way. We'll see what we can find for you. Bye. Fare thee well, ma'am. <sighs> so, made out fair decently with yeah, a di- fair bit of money. All things considered, this uh, <laughs> kind of shangles the big bag of rubies he now has. Yeah, no, this uh, more than almost tripled our purse. <laughs> Your regular money bags. <laughs> Head back over and, and join the, gr- the group. Eloy's sitting there bopping out a, a dirge on his Centauri bongos, which he seldom plays these days, because the only songs his people have are dirges. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like I said, you know that it's just a little bit up the ways so you can find the uh, the tower. Mm-hmm. If you uh, travel up the way where uh, Jillian's corpse is right now. But first, we have a choice to make. We have this chest sitting here. Do we want what's in it, or do we want to trade it for something? Because on one hand, we got a chest here full of free stuff. On the other hand, we could see Grammy Gr- 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 Giggle Splinters again. My fear is... The biggest treasure. <laughs> a- assuming Dagon and, and Ezra were discussing it, discussing this as they yeah. came upon the scene. My fear is, if we lie to her and tell her we don't have one and she somehow finds out, I don't want to know what she's capable of in these woods to, to stop us from leaving. On the other hand, I have a feeling whatever's in that chest is going to be better than what she's going to give us if we return it. It's possible. It's possible. Because she did say that whatever he had was not worthy of the treasures. Exactly. And that's kind of like not a treasure I it's like want. A, it's like a, it's like a runner-up. Yeah. Runner-up to her, anyway. I mean, you know, it might, might be more valuable to her and less valuable to us, but... She might be crazy. No. Possible. <laughs> I wouldn't rule it out. Ezra sizes up the crew he's got, now one nature elf short considers his options. In a fight, I think we could take her. <laughs> we, I mean, she could be some old type. Like, she might be a demigod. I am unsure exactly what she is. Well, you know what? Nothing this ventured, is the nothing... second hag you've encountered in the game so far. <laughs> nothing ventured, nothing gained. Ezra begins opening the chest. <laughs> you know what? We're just going to see what's inside here. Your call, Captain. Just because hey, just we look does not yeah, mean exactly. we have to take nothing it. Nothing says we're taking what's inside. <laughs> exactly. Just that it opened when it was out here. All right, well, you open up the chest. There are more displays, like a couple of like uh, wooden little notches of displays that shelve the serums. Red, blue, green, red, blue, green, red, blue, green, red, blue, green. And in the center of it all, you don't know what this is, but you guys now see a specimen jar that's, you know like the, you know like the really, really large pickle jars that you find at the supermarket? Yeah. That sized, but it's a specimen jar of the abyssal tumor. I wonder what this red stuff is. I would recommend setting it back based on what it's with. Fair Uh, enough. Looks looks over to Kazmov. So, let's just say, for for argument's sake, Mm -hmm. that uh, a, a special forest hag may have very, very dangerous materials in her possession. Materials that seem somewhat responsible for the current predicament. What would the uh, official uh, advisor and or guardian to the to the soon-to-be king have to say about that if he knew right under his trunk 
Um, soon to be guardian to the soon to be king. Thank you. Soon to be guardian to the soon to be king. Your position does allow you to be a lot higher than the sun guard, so the law can be warped at your discretion. I'm just here to let you know that uh, this blue serum seems to have something to do with this terrifying <clears throat> mist that's causing a lot of these problems and how it's overreacting. And she just happens to have a chest full of it. And this red stuff is new. Yes, I'm very curious. Yeah, Char Charlotte, would you would would a vial of that red stuff help you to figure out? She's already taken one of the racks for herself. Oh, if we're just grabbing. <laughs> Trunk. <laughs> anyway, you're the, uh, despite me being the captain of my humble crew, you're technically the law in this neighborhood. So I'm just letting you know that, you know, this seems like some shady dealings. And if we go in there and just attack this wood hag, that seems very, pr that seems problematic in all sorts of legal areas. But if the local sheriff came in with some sort of your equivalent of a warrant, then maybe we could just solve this problem before it comes back to bite us. I'd like you to roll a knowledge history check with advantage. Knowledge history, okay. So that is a 16. The law can be bent and shaped at your will in the city limits. Outside of the city limits, there are only a few races that you could actually have this sort of power over a hag you've never heard of ever having being in that descriptor. A gnome, however, that's 100% your role. Well, Captain, there's a bit of a problem. My jurisdiction is, is within the city limits. Out here, only a handful of races. Yes. That? No. Yeah, what is this thing? I'm pulling out and just kind of like looking at this jar with this like lump in it. Careful. That thing, we've had to deal with things like that before, and it seems like they really like to grab hold to anything that makes physical contact with them, so be as careful as you can wielding that. Also, Captain, I was referring to our lovely host in the hut. I see. Well, I'm just letting you know that <clears throat> it seems like there's something very dangerous, literally <laughs> tries to look over basically in the direction of the city we came from. You know, like this far from your city. Just letting you know. Well, Captain, there's a reason we built around this mountaintop. Yeah, you, you bring up a fair point. How big is this jar? Is it like a mason jar? Is it like it's a... It's like a pickle jar. Like a really okay, large so pickle jar. Like this big? Yeah, like like probably like this big. Okay. Hmm. Can't really put that in a bag. I'll just set it down. Captain says don't mess with it. Leave it alone. But you two know exactly what's going on with this thing. Yeah, I... If we had somebody to take it to, I suppose we could put it in one of my saddlebags, but I'd, I feel icky carrying yeah, it. Yeah, it's... And I wouldn't even know what we were taking it to do with it. Uh, if you want to disclose any information to anyone else around here, like, saying, like, what the fuck you guys just went through. Yeah. Like, I'm sure every... You, you're, you've been behind the tech desk, so I could say, like, for quick, like, just, yeah. hey. Explanation ex For quick explanation, it'll take you, like, five minutes in-game just to be like, hey, this is why this shit's really fucking bad. So this bad. is an abyssal tumor, and we had to deal with this one guy, Victor. <laughs> now, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a prick. <laughs> yeah, well, we slam-dunked him into a lava pile with a god of some sort. It was pretty terrifying. Impressive. Technically, I think I can call that god now, but, I, you know... Haven't had occasion. Who to. has the time? Exactly. Who keeps in touch via phone? I mean, you still, technically, now that you're standing on actual land, this is the last bit before you go any further up into the stratosphere <laughs> that you could contact the the uh, the collective one. I mean, I've, I've yet to contact the collective one, and this doesn't exactly seem like its area of expertise. I, I will say, as gods go, most of them either kill you or ignore you. This one slam dunked a horrific monster into a hell dimension for us, so like, aces as gods go, as far as I'm concerned. Can't disagree. Well, it's one of the acolytes of the god of all of Earth, so. <laughs> anyway, this thing points at the, points at the, uh, the abyssal uh, lump, just said, this, this is just bad news, and the things it comes in contact with are normally corrupted beyond any sort of repair. The fact that there's one stewing around in this woods, I was already nervous about this Fey stuff, knowing that this is here too, 
I don't want to see those thing, things ever meet. I'm going to roll an arcana check for Charlotte real quick. Wow. Okay, that saved the roll. Uh, I used to have a plus five in intelligence. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte begins putting two and two together uh, as she's like piecing together like the mist that was what you said before was an accelerant to the plants. And that was taken into the mist before it. And she looks, she now looks at Dagon and she starts like writing down notes as she's scribbling in her journal. Do you remember what the runes are saying up there on the petals? Uh, it said, in defense of the seraphim. I have a theory, but I don't know how sound this theory is. Well, More I'm sound obvious. than mine. All this stuff that we have, the, the, ser the serums that we have here, they're all different reactions to all things that have to do with celestial or anything radiant. And this mist is some kind of defense for something. So I'm not a doctor, but I've read a couple of books saying something about antibodies and like your blood has a defense system. And I feel like the mist is the defense system trying to spread out. So something is triggering the defense system. So it's got some un unwanted guests, not including us since it's been doing this before we got here. And that's what it's lashing out against? It must be. It doesn't know how to discern anything that's not a celestial. So it's already got foreign bodies invading it, and it's just fighting everything in its path to attempt at curing itself. Well, anything that's not a celestial, I feel that that giant bird monstrosity thing that was after us, that's part of it. It just took whatever was celestial into its fold and made it part of the system. Well then we'll probably need to keep getting deeper in if it's spreading out. Hopefully we can figure out what's causing this. Either way... God posted just a little <clears> north of here. <laughs> we better keep moving. Takes one long look at Jillian, just kind of gives like a, like a sort of a forgive me-esque nod. And just like, well, hopefully we can figure things out and not with as, hopefully without any more casualties. Starts. I'm replenishing my plant rejuvenators and taking five of those red vials. <laughs> Alrighty. I don't know whether I hope that her soul's still in there or that it's not. I hope however she is that she's... At peace. Yeah. Well, like I said, chick didn't eat her, so... Yeah. Yeah, better I than mean, the worst case scenario. Yeah. We at least know she avoided one terrible fate. Alright, so where are you guys going to go from here? I mean, the place that we've been heading towards is just up the path over here. All right. Uh, I will go ahead and show off the area. <clears throat> uh, da -da -da -da, view site, reveal areas. Here we go. Oh, look, it's right here. Oop, there we are. Uh-oh. Sorry, I kind of moved you by accident. That's no, fine. And then Charlotte is right here. This is your defense post? It's one of them. It's the southern tower. Yeah, what, what do we see when we walk up to this? When you walk up, uh, when you pass through the clearing, it takes like maybe a 10 minute walk to head over there. Does it? Okay. I'm just saying. Yeah, gotcha. Things. It's a huge map, but time and distance can be a little clusterfucky. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Uh. You head over and you see like a smaller version of the outpost that you guys walked from as soon as you entered in from the bridge. Uh, there is a small wall that kind of like lurches from the side of it that goes down to the floor. And against it are all little out, uh, little holes and little staircases filled with ballistas. And the one up on the top actually looks like it's a full-fledged defense cannon, like a mortar. Anyone home? Uh, you do not see any people guarding the post as of right now. And the door that leads into the outpost itself is closed. I'm going to sneak up along the tower and just kind of like... There are windows on the first floor, so you could peek in. Okay, and I'm going to sneak up there and just kind of take a little look. <laughs> Bless 17. you. 17. 17. 
You kind of like tiptoe yourself up to the uh, one of the windows. You leer over, and you notice there's a lot of silk on the inside, like a lot of spider silk. I don't know, guys. Spiders might have gotten here. There's a lot of silk. Uh, there is a a rack filled with uh, arrows, like ballista arrows, and a few that are filled with the mortar shells. They are untouched, but again, just covered in spider silk. Because what the fuck do spiders have to do with the arrows yeah. and ballistas? There's still some ammunition laying around, but it looks like it's been covered by the silk, which gives me a very bad feeling. Now that is, it, is it fair to assume that they're all dead? <sighs> I don't... <laughs> How far away from Jillian or, or uh, from... Uh... Yeah, Jillian, are we? Can we see her in the distance? I mean, she's a giant fucking tree now. Mm -hmm. You can see her. I don't know if I want to make that assumption just yet. Now, now we the guards said that they heard cannon fire from from down this way. How long ago was that? Do we know? Probably like, like uh, a few hours, maybe like just before you guys started heading out. Hmm. Uh, I'm just saying, we go in there, we're probably going to find more spiders. Yeah. And I'm not going to deny that, but... A fair number of corpses. Uh, and... How tall is this tower, roughly? Uh, you're probably looking at a 400-foot tower, so four stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not just something that I can just kind of hop up and climb. <laughs> All right, you, well... And you know these towers actually have, like, basements for the people to actually, like, like shack up when they need to go yeah. to sleep. Well, if there if there's anyone left inside, Dagon's gonna amble around and look for a door. <laughs> oh, you can see the door. Yeah, oh. the door's in broad daylight, but it's closed. Dagon's gonna try the door. It's locked. Also, these towers do have basements. That's where the so soldiers quarter up, just rest. Say so that hammer did a good job on that kitchen door. Do you think it could? Uh... Mind giving me some space, please? Dagon steps back and just gives kind of like a after you gesture. Now, should I just do this as just a straight up athletics check or just as an attack? This will be an athletics check. Okay. That's a 12. Your hammer does something. It does blast through the front of it, enough for you to peer inside and notice that there's something barring the door, like they've shacked up a couple of the racks in front of the door. Well, it looks like they barricaded the door. So this wanted might... Wanted to keep them and the spiders safe. <laughs> this might take me a while. You want to try again? If there's anyone in there who wants out, now would be a good time to let us know. I don't speak spider, but piss off or die. Roll a perception check. A 24. Uh, nine. 17. You hear, you guys hear something muffled, but you two hear in Sylvan. Oh, is there someone out there? Please help me. There's definitely someone in there, guys. Yes, we're here. I, I, I just start yelling. You guys hear like, you know, like the wee munchkin lad kind of voice, like off of the distance. Like, <laughs> I can hear you in that little fellow. Don't worry. It's probably a spider <laughs> tricking us. <laughs> Lulling us in for a sense of self. <laughs> it's very possible, Dagon, but that's a risk I'm willing to take if it's going to save somebody if, if we're wrong. The couple of them pulled us out for them. I didn't know what to do. It's just, I thought I was drinking the red drink. It was, it was so, so thirsty. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You, are you under attack? Is there, anything, is there anything in there with you? I'm stuck in a cocoon. Do you know if what cocooned you is still in there? Just get me out! Jeez, we're getting through the door. <laughs> uh, Anyone want to give me a hand with the door? Fine. Dagon, athletics check, 18. Look at this, a Luxodon and an, a Luxodon and an Extinguished working together. <laughs> you say people's, you, people say no one's progressing. What'd you roll? 18, anymore. Dagon just gives it like a big boot. A nion. A nion. All those together. Man, I rolled a nat 20, that's neat. So that, door just... so that door has a really good athletics check. <laughs> oh no, that door does have a really good athletics check, but as you kick it open, the door 
kind of just like swings open, but it, it and it actually like hits like all the stuff that was on the shelf that it was holding on to. So like all like the arrows and the cannon mortars, they all topple over all around a nest. Like it's a giant, a giant globe of silk is sitting on the floor and there are tiny spiders like just running around it. Are you inside this big ball of web? <laughs> it's coming from downstairs. Okay, good. We can destroy this nest if we, if we need to. He's not in there. Who here has fire? Well, <laughs> I mean, we got all these mortars here and I got a lantern and I, we could make this happen. Oh, give me a second, friends. Actually, no. If we have another means to do this, that would be smarter because I can only do this once a day. Mm. Holds up the <laughs> the, the fireball uh, staff I was given by Red. Ah, this might be a little too much for what we're looking for. <laughs> and Charlie kindly looks to you. Also, wouldn't that set off every explosive in this entire building? I'm not saying we shouldn't get back. I'm just saying I'll take Without care of helping the person who's downstairs? They might live. We'll save them first. <laughs> How do we get to the basement? There is a barred door with a with a uh, there's a barred gate with a door gate, but it's also locked. All right. Ezra readies his crossbow and just starts scanning the room. If someone wants to open that door, I'll cover you. I mean, the door is open, right? We just kind of like knocked everything around. Well, the front door is open. The gate that to, goes down to, to the, the basement. basement is locked. Well, I mean, we still have to. I mean, obviously, the first thing we have to deal with is the goddamn spider nest. So yeah, Ugh. there's like one. There's like three spider nests sitting off in the corner. This will not initiate combat, but it is like you know, a little bit of a dungeon bit. Yeah, it's an obstacle. I'm, I'm an obstacle. I'm basically readying to shoot any spiders that I see appearing to attack my friends. Alrighty, so <laughs> if you. I, if I see an aggressive spider. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna try to make a perception check just to see if there are any of those big spiders in there that we were dealing with. All right. Uh, perception check twenty two. Twenty-two. Oh, there is a big spider. It's up on the ceiling, looking down at you. However, it does have a giant ballista arrow stuck in the middle of it. Like someone like, took the took the arrow and tossed it at it. Okay, so is this spider like moving? It's dead. Or? Okay. It's dead. Well, at least that one's fucking dead. Um. All right, Dagon's gonna take the first kind of couple of steps into this. You walk inside. There are corpses on the floor that are covered underneath the entire like like, area of silk. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, there are sun guard with... It looks like their skin's still on their face, but it looks like the blood was drained out of them, and they are still wearing their attire. Some of them having a couple of spears, some with swords. They're all just attached to the floor at this point. Seeing these horrible corpses, uh, Ezra starts yelling out to the captive again, just like, all right, buddy, I'm gonna need you to stay calm. Can you tell me, like, what's your name? How'd you get here? What's, what's going on? What, what'd you see? I can't see anything. I can the only thing I can move is my mouth. Everything else is just sticky and gross. Were you? Oh, I've been in situations like that. <laughs> were you brought here by by choice, by force? I'm seeing a lot of guard bodies here. You weren't in trouble, were you? I was. I was taken in by the outsiders to because I had a red drink. I don't know what the red drink is. I was about to drink it. Okay, so you haven't you haven't tasted it yet. Don't no. worry. As soon as we get you out of here, you can have as much red drink as you want. Dagon's just sneaking through, trying to make his way over to that barred gate. You make it to the gate. All right. Now, uh, what what kind of mechanism is this? Like, obviously, it's being like blocked off by some of the shit we knocked over. Uh, that's not being barricaded. Oh, okay. The uh, the lock itself, though. Looks like a very sophisticated pulley lock that it requires two people to actually release a mechanism and in tandem, but it's also a different combination of how the mechanism moves. Oh, Lord. Uh, cat. Guys, is it just me? This lock looks like it was meant to keep... Because the, the dealie to open it is on this side. Is he in a prison cell down there? I mean, it sounds like he was drinking whatever that red vial was and someone didn't like it, so they threw him in here. But it sounds like he doesn't know any better about it. So. Charlotte kind of like screams. She like looks to you like they, she can't understand this because she doesn't have Sylvan. Yeah, actually, which Isn't is weird. She an elf? Yeah, that's weird. I was just like she doesn't have Sylvan, but it's not in here. Mm. Alignment, blah blah blah. Background features. No, she knows common, dwarvish, elvish, infernal, and primordial, but not Sylvan. 
All right, so there's a lever on one side of the door and a lever on the other side of the door. Yes, and they have two separate, like, areas where the levers could go, but and it looks like this has to be activated by two different people. All right. I explain to anyone who seems confused whenever I am talking to, uh, to this guy, mm -hmm. uh, just going like, <laughs> seems like he was, he also had, he found the, the colored vials like we did, and he was about to drink a red one before he was grabbed and, and thrown in here. Does anybody know how to do that thing that mages do where they're manipulating shit from far away? Because I, as much as I'd love to just call one of my friends out here, this seems like kind of a waste just to pull a lever. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't got that one. Hmm. Miss Red was always good with that one. She did have a, the movement spells. Either way, if we, if we need someone to just get over there and, and flip Charlotte, the switch. Charlotte actually looks to you all as she, she sits down on, she kneels down on the floor, pulls out the little candlesticks and starts putting them around herself as she claps her hands and looks like she's about to get into prayer. Just cover me. She, right. ca she casts Commune with the Dead. You actually hear voices coming from Chick as she's talking. Oh, hello, they're they're trying to speak out to her in the same vein. Oh. Uh, a lot of the corpses of the soldiers, you watch as wisps of light as their bodies kind of like lurch forward, almost like how a mummy gets up from a movie. They sit up and they like they try to reach out to her as they're like trying to speak to her in Infernal, and she's actually getting all of this. She looks to Dagon and she actually instructs you to stand on the left side while she goes to the right side. I stand on the left side. My, my mechanism needs to go up first to the top. Yours needs to go second on the bottom. Gotcha. You Roll. top, I bottom. Yep. Nat 20, she gets her side with no problem. Oh, what am I rolling? You are rolling a, bu 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 bu. let me double check this. You are rolling a acrobatics check. All right, timing. Uh, modified 20. Modified 20? Excellent. You feel it, like, like the mechanism, like, stop on you for a hot second, mm -hmm. but with enough <clears throat> force, you're able to pull it down at the exact same time she gets hers to the top. And the lock opens from the middle, and you watch as the keyhole appears, and then they both split apart, and the door is able to be pushed in. Push it in. It's a fancy door. All right, on the way down. Don't worry, Fred. We're sending someone down to get you now. I did also ask a couple of the guards what the reason why he was down there. Oh. It appears he was trying to steal boxes that were here in the uh, private quarters. He found his way into the uh, into the contraband room and he tried to steal one of the boxes. Apparently the guards found someone with a very gray complexion and almost looking like he was near death wandering around in the woods with these boxes and pouring them out on plants. Hmm. Well, that seems unfortunate. Uh, well, on the plus side, it's his lucky day. When they're dead, it's not stealing, it's looting. It's, it, you do have a point. Either way, this doesn't sound like a, an offense worth killing a man over, so if we can get him out of here, we can burn this tower oh, they, down. They weren't planning on killing him, they just wanted to question him, and then the spiders came when the well, mist rolled in. I, I think more what he meant is if we left him down there, we'd be killing him. <laughs> and that don't seem right. We leaving should get him, him out here, of there. Leaving, leaving him here is essentially a death sentence, and I don't think, I don't think a little bit of looting warrants that. And who knows? Maybe he has some skills that'll be helpful for us. Eh, he could have broken out if that were the case, is my guess. Hmm. I've been stuck in some sticky situations and needed other people to get me out, but I've got things to offer. Fair enough, Captain. Let me double check something real quick here. Thank God I have my computer. Technology! Hooray! Beep, beep, boop, boop, beep. All the while, Ezra is not taking his eyes off these spider nests. Uh, while, while the spider nests aren't there anymore, they were more sitting outside. The spiders couldn't get inside through these grates. Okay. Uh, however, there is, like, a bit of the layer of the spider web on, uh, going down the staircase. So walking down here will be a little bit of difficult terrain, so I need everyone to roll me a acrobatics check. <laughs> not me with my ring of free action. Stick to this wall here. Now, is this spider webbing magical? Uh, it is the face spider webbing. Okay. Because, yeah, I am immune to non-magical difficult terrain, but if it's... Acrobatics check of a 18. Mm -hmm. Charlotte 
falls face first down the stairs. <laughs> she takes one step. All right, I just got. To... Need some help. I need some help, Dad. Yeah. Yes, please. Nineteen. Dagon's gonna do an athletics check with, to try to get her back up. With your ass feet, you just like waddle your way down the stairs, and you're ripping holes open enough that people can just like hop from step to step to go down the stairs. Uh, Dagon has an Big athletics feet. check of uh, uh, twelve to get Charlotte back up. You try to you, you her rip her and... back up. Her the entire front of her is covered in a layer of that that thick web. Ew. Yep. <laughs> nope, not, not, not going to comment. There we go. Yeah. May want to get yourself cleaned up after this. Oh, she just like, she like just starts peeling the shit off. And she actually looks at it. Wait a minute. She starts pocketing it with, I'm going to roll a survival check. Nope, she tries. She tries to get it into a jar and it actually like starts to disappear as the, the moment she tries to put it into a containment. Oh, it gets stuck to her fingers and that's just a residue. Yep. Uh... <clears throat> you are down the staircase. Uh, there are a couple of rooms. Uh, there are cell quarters, pretty much. Uh, there's a few, like, four cells, two to the left, two to the right. And if you look to your left immediately as you go down the steps, there's a small quarters that has a bunch of bedding inside of it. I'm going to go in there and loop through the foot lockers. Uh, all right. I call out again. Just like, all right, buddy, where are you? I'm over here. It's all the way in the back on the right. I head in that direction. Uh... There are, the more you head towards the back, the more there are corpses hanging up from the ceiling wrapped in silk. And a lot of them have tiny spiders coming in and out of the corpses. So, you said you can't see anything else down here? No. Perception, I'm just gonna make sure there's, there's look, look for spiders. Like big spiders. There's big spiders, I got a 14. 14? No, you don't see a big spider. You don't see any spiders whatsoever. However, you start seeing more of those weird deformed bird creatures from you saw outside hanging up from the ceiling in the silk. Yeah, those, those birds look weird to you guys too, right? <laughs> yep. Next, right. next to them is a very tiny, uh, very tiny, tiny uh, cocoon all the way in the corner. All right, pal, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Come and try and get you out. You might feel a little bit of jostling, but don't worry, it's just me. Don't worry, it's just me. <laughs> who, who is me, though? What is your name? <laughs> nice try, but I asked your name first. You never told me. I didn't know if you were from Orion. I'm sorry if I was what? I didn't know. You don't know what... I don't know. How do I know you're not a Fomorian? I'm not a Fomorian. I don't even know what that is, buddy. Roll a knowledge... Uh, roll a knowledge check. I don't know. Three. <laughs> Never heard of him. Yep, that's... You got me, pal, but if you don't like him, I'm not one of them. Let's see. Since Charlotte here is our expert knowledge domain cleric. <laughs> She's the only one with any brains in this outfit. <laughs> Dagon's essentially looting through people's laundry, seeing what they have. You're just finding clothes in more of the Sun Guard outfits. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pocket some of the... Like, if I find one that's relatively my size, I'm going to put that away. Oh, yeah, well, then, at that point, you pretty much could find... Uh, Plate mail. Sun guard. Yeah, you have sun guard plate mail. Sun guard armor. Uh, well, yeah. Charlotte's got a plus eight in history. With a 16, yeah. Charlotte's Fomorian? Does that, she does like that ring any bells She rummages you? through her book. Oh, that's not pretty. They're giant fays, almost like ogres. They bully other small fay and kind of keep them for slavery. Yeah, I'm definitely not that. Uh, I'm, I'm a half elf. I don't even know if you know what that is, but that's definitely not Fomorian. I know what an elf is. It's what all of it used to live here before the Great Purge. Sounds about right. I, I'm a half elf, and the other half of me is a donkey, so I'm, I think I'm good. He's got to be a Fomorian. Only a Fomorian would make up a stupid story like that. Trust me, he's all too real. Uh, what would I roll if I was trying to? Yeah, all right. I'm, I'm approaching the cocoon. <laughs> I'm not going to just try and shoot it down at, at a range. <laughs> What's all this about Fomorians? What's a Fomorian? It's apparently it's a big, scary fey monster that this guy doesn't want me to be, and luckily for him, I'm not. Well, yes, that is very lucky for him. Uh, I need you to roll me a dex save. Dex? Okay. Ooh, uh, 27. What a dex save? Sorry. Yeah, dex save. Uh, 
24. One of the cocoons bursts open as a tidal wave of small face spider babies like trinkles down from the ceiling. Uh. You are just, just step off to the side enough for them to not take notice to you, but kind of like lurch around and then find one of the corpses on the floor and they all dive into it. Yeah, we're burning this place to the ground. Burning it all right. the yes, way absolutely. down. Okay, great. I just need to make sure that no one else is alive in here before we before we burn it down. You know, other than the spiders. <laughs> they can be alive all they want. Well, not for long. Exactly. Uh, you take another step towards them? Yes. Roll another one. Roll another deck save. Less good. Oh wait, no, that's actually very good. I thought that was a five, but it's a 19. 25. Hmm. Same as, second verse, same as the first. You step over to the side, like you fucking like curve the bullet just as the shift falls to the side. All right, you know what? I'm just, <laughs> guns come out. I'm just gonna start taking shots at the goddamn like cocoons that I see uh, up on top of him moving towards Investigation the check. Investigation. See oh, it's a 19 on the die and plus two, that is a 21. Yep, you see the rest of them. Pop. Pop. Uh, you do tell Ezra to like stay back a little bit just so the other spider legs don't start coming out and attacking him. Step back. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. You, you just hear this poor gnome fella just scream out loud. No! Don't worry, we're clearing we're clearing out the spiders around you to Sorry, make sure they don't killing some Gamorians or whatever you're talking about. Just making sure you're safe, buddy. Don't worry. This is this is all to help you. As bullets are whizzing by him, he just hears squelch, squelch. <laughs> Turns out you were in the middle of a big nest, buddy. Uh, by the way, <laughs> you were... <laughs> yeah, so you put that away, you find those. What are you doing, by the way, Eloy? I'm... Honestly, at this point, I'm just pulling out my short bow and trying to give give cover, keep, a, keep my head on a swivel for any more large spiders that might show up. Alrighty. Uh, I will say this, though. Uh... He did, uh, Charlotte did tell you that there is a room that they keep all the contraband, and it is down here, which you guys have not found just yet. Yeah. Uh, at this point, you get to the, you get to the cocoon, and how do you plan to release this man, as you are now sitting right in front of him? I have a dagger, I'm just going to start, uh, if it's, if it's hanging, is it, like, hanging too high for me to cut down? It's, you said, you it's said in the middle, small. it's in the middle of the wall, it's on the middle of the wall, so it's kind of, like, a little high up. It will take a little bit of precision. Okay. I'm guessing that would be a dex check or something. Uh, roll me a survival check. Okay. Uh, 13. All right, I'm cutting you free now, buddy. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm going to do my best, but I, I can't really see you from all this web. Roll damage. D4. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. You probably felt a good four points worth of damage there. <laughs> Sneak attack. What? What? No, I was that, announced that he, in my presence. Yeah, he, yeah he's that was. I'm being. I'm being. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. Good sir, this may be my first campaign, <laughs> but there was nothing stealthy about this approach. If anything, I was going out of my way to constantly tell him I was near. I'm being a shit. <laughs> I'm on to you, Zio. Beware my blade. <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful. Yeah, you, you, you take a nice carve out of his shoulder before realizing, ooh, not that ooh, deep. Ooh, sorry, 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 sorry. A little higher. A little higher. And you, <laughs> Trust me, you should see the other guy. You cut him down, and he falls to the floor. It is a purple-skinned, very short gnome, probably, like, up to your kneecaps when he stands up as he, like, wipes himself down and, like, rubs his shoulder. He's wearing a white, like a white button-up shirt, and it all, it's striped, and he's wearing suspenders. Almost looks like a bartender's garb. Hey, buddy. All right. I think you, you okay. You feeling all right? He's Nothing? got a he's got a little buzz cut uh, black hair that kind of like looks like it like it goes from a widow's peak into like a flat top that goes all the way to the back, and it's GT, really, really GT, short. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Hold up three fingers. How many fingers am I holding up, buddy? Uh, uh, ow, three? All right, you can see. Okay, let's get him out of here and burn this place to the ground. Uh, one question. You were uh, found down here just looking through some things. Uh, where exactly was that? Do you remember? Looking through some contraband. He doesn't understand you. 
Oh, sorry. Let me translate. Now, although he does see Keldabov and he notices his garb. Woo! Easy, easy, easy. You're not in a ton of trouble yet. <laughs> I say somewhat threatening, but... But he's scared. right there! What, what, why? What's going on? Don't worry. He's with me. Now, when you were when you were thrown in here, the, uh... <laughs> all the information I have tells me that you you might have been might have been sticking your hand in the old cookie jar and maybe got caught. Uh, but well, guess I mean, what? It's a really big cookie jar, friend. It's like... I'm sure it is. And I like the way you think, because guess what? Mom's out. Cookie jar's all ours. I just need you to tell me where it is. Persuasion. Roll an insight for him. Ooh. Bless you. 22. It takes him like a split second, but then like he goes from like worried to just like, oh, <laughs> like nods his head, and, like taps I, his nose, it looks to you. I put a bit of a hand on his shoulder. Now, <laughs> now, since I got you out, obviously there's going to be a bit of a finder's fee. But once we're si clear and safe, I don't mind if you walk away with a few more vials than you came here with. Mm, okay, I like the way you think. I mean, the only problem is is that my tavern's kind of closed up. The Fomorians broke the bridge. Well, hopefully we can get you something to buy some bridges with. Mm, well, maybe. I'll tell you what. I'll let you keep everything they have if you all seem strong, willing, and able. Him especially. But what if I paid you to get rid of all the Fomorians in the woods? Well, we're kind of already on a bit of a mission, but hey, nothing says we can't try. All right, very good. Well, I'm I'm more than certain the rest of your friends will probably get killed. You two, unfortunately, will be uh, sold off to the highest bidder if they ever catch you. Shrugs. They'd have to catch me first. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dead. Okay, I'll show you where all the other stuff is. Follow me. Womp, 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 womp. Yep. <laughs> you, you, you got, uh, the rest of you kind of just like watch as this little dude just kind of just like waddles his way that all, like out of those spiders. That seemed like a productive conversation. Yeah, he thinks he's in control of the situation, but he doesn't know us. <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> Oh, that's funny, friend. You find that I find uh, that very funny. We're speaking common right now. He doesn't know what we're saying. <laughs> mm. He like looks over to he looks over to Keldamov as he's walking by. Apparently, this guy's kinda a bit of like, a kind of like hugs the wall and kind of like shimmies to the left. Apparently, this guy's a bit of a bartender, and business has been bad ever since the Fomorians, I don't know, roughed up his door or something. So uh, you know, we're gonna come here and pick up everything we can find and. Send him on his happy way. He's willing to pay us if we can knock out any Fomorians we see on our way. So, you know, we'll figure it out. In what? Pixie dust? <laughs> if this guy's some kind of bartender, he might have some sick booze or something. We don't know. Fair enough. Uh, he goes into the left room where you were in before. This place was entirely encapsulated in silk, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he kind of like looks left and right, kind of like rummaging like through his like his memory banks, like which way did I put? Oh, that's right. He goes over to the commander station. And he starts rummaging through like a bunch of paperwork. He's like throwing stuff out all over the place. Okay, no, no, no. Like a bunch of keys. No. Some rubies. No. Hey. Like two or three rubies he like throws out to the side. He uh he finds another he lo he finds like one of those little locks like you saw up at the front. It was like the two handle locks. Yeah. He moves over towards a chest that looks like it's it's just a straight wooden crate. He adds it on top of it, and it creates a slit in the wood. And he starts fidgeting with the locks and opens it up for you. This does seem like a complicated thing. Good he, find. You just, like, watch as he's doing this with at, with complete ease. He's never, like, like he's seen these locks before a million times over, and he's just capable of just... Impressive. He's pretty good at that. Like, imp like surprisingly well good at that. You ever consider changing jobs and just going treasure hunting? Oh, no, no, no. That was, that used to be my occupation back in the days. Oh, by the way, my name's Gorin. Nice to meet you, Gorin. I'm Ezra. I extend a hand out for a handshake. He takes two fingers. Glad we could glad we could be business partners, even if it's, uh, you know, only for now. You seem like a fine fellow. Start rummaging through the, the things that he has opened. All right. Uh, you open up the box. It has more of those red vials inside of it. More, yep. Red, green, blue... And also some manifestos on how to create the red vials. 
I hold up the red vial. So you said you haven't drank any of these yet. Do you have any idea what they do? No, but I've been seeing a bunch of folks walking through the woods, just laying them out all over the place. I wanted to see what they taste like. I am. I imagined a bunch of those folks in cloaks were just people in the woods just playing around, or maybe some of the folks over here, they do like to investigate and send out folks from time to time instead of coming to our bar and asking for a small fee for us to do it for them. I mean, we could tell them all sorts of stories, you know, well, you know for the right price. Oh, well, you know, I, I can't understand anything, but I'm handing this shit over to uh, Jillian. Or, yeah. uh, sorry, Charlotte. she's dead. Charlotte. Charlotte is the one that is alive and can probably understand these better than me. We'll eventually get, stop getting these two mixed up now that one of them is dead. One of them is gone. <laughs> Anyway, so Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I give Charlotte these uh, papers because obviously it includes ingredients and stuff. Maybe she can decipher what that means. She starts rummaging through them. I'm going to roll in knowledge for her real quick. She doesn't have all the details in there, but she does notice that it has something to do with when you explained what the abyssal was. She kind of like looked through all the paperwork. She's like, well, apparently this red serum has to do with more of the components of that abyssal stuff you found in the jar. Great. And you said you saw a bunch of... Back to Sylvan. So you, and you said you saw a bunch of people laying out these, these red vials? Oh, they were talking to the Fomorians for quite some time to see if they could use whatever they find as slaves to buy them off for their test subjects. That lines up. Don't drink this. <laughs> I, I give him a, a very brief he like puts He puts his hands on his waist and looks at you like, are you fucking with me, son? <laughs> Just a, a very brief description of the Abyssal. This apparently has a lot of components uh, involved in making the undead do things. I don't think you want to ingest it. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Feel free to try, I guess, but I'm warning you. Uh, well, going around stealing stuff, being the sneaky type, making sure that I'm not the first guinea pig for most of this bullshit. Well, I think I'll take your word for it just for now. Yeah, because honestly, you're more useful to me being able to open things than hurdling undead matter out of your mouth. Well, that's good of you to tell me. Uh, I don't think anyone else around here is alive. Most of the folks up here have been eaten by the face spiders or turned into young for them. Ever since that mist started rolling in, everything's been getting worse and worse. See these things here? He points over to the, the bird creature. These didn't start showing up until a few weeks ago. They kind of just been growing and growing and then more things in the woods just started becoming part of the entire mist itself just comes down, snatches up into people's brains, and makes you their willing uh, little guardians. Hmm. Well, we hopefully are going to put a stop to that, because apparently it's been a bunch of vampires or something <laughs> running around up here causing all sorts of mischief. So, you know, if you know anything, just let us know. We're trying to do this for everybody. Uh, Jillian, I'm going to roll something for her, because I hope she remembers. Oh, thank God she does. She kind of like pats you on the shoulder. Does he know anything about a ga uh, gate? Hey, uh, so we're looking for a gate. You know anything about that? A, a gate? Like, what kind of gate? I mean, there's gates that open to my bar, I guess. Well, we're kind of looking for, like, a, a, a... We need to get to the to, to up to the top, and there's supposedly, like, a portal of some sort that can take us there in this, in these woods. Kind of, like, taps his, he taps his uh, chin, trying to, like, recollect what you're talking about. Oh, you mean that stone thing that the Fomorians broke? That might be it. Well, I know they might have bits and pieces of it. I know they were keen to not only sell off any slaves off to the highest bidder, but that highest bidder also was really interested in a lot of the gates and making sure they don't work. Give me just a second. Uh, it look, look, looks to kill him up. So, hey, uh, this teleporter thing, does it work if it's in, say, pieces? Because according to this guy, think, uh, so the, these Fomorian folks might have come along and, and had a vested interest in breaking it. No. It doesn't. That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Well, then our job might have gotten a little, a little bit a lot harder. I'll say. Well, I'll tell you this, though. See him? Points at Eloy. He points over at Eloy. Now that's something special. You got yourself one of them four-legged folks walking around here. They'll start thinking it's a unicorn and want to drink his blood. Well, that's a real bad idea. We met some boys what did that. It, it caused them no end of trouble. Oh, but that's the thing. They know about those stories. It's all tied to the Fae nonsense, my friend. 
It's all Fey nonsense. They hate anything that's smaller, and they hate anything that's more Fey than them, and they lock them up in, in, uh, into cells and sell them off to anyone that wants to buy them. Well, it wouldn't be the first that's tried. So wait, you're not a... What are you exactly? We haven't... We've, we've heard of your kind, but I've, for the longest time I thought you were walking around with a unicorn. Looks around. E either way, this is a conversation better had outside this spider-filled tower if we want to... We want to get going. Especially considering how on <laughs> fire I'm still very keen to make it. Same. <laughs> uh, so I, I point at the, the thing that he opened. So this is where all the contraband was? There wasn't anything else? Because we're going to be sending this place to hell. So if you're trying to hide something, it's not going to do you any good. Uh, there's a couple of extra lances that are in here. And they're all basic sun guard lances. And the only thing that's special about them is that they actually can emit fire damage instead of just regular piercing. Would they be considered finesse weapons? Uh, spears are considered finesse weapons. Ooh, then I'll take one. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab up a fire lance. There's a reason we use them. I think Eloy might actually get bonuses with them since he's considered mounted on himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look that up later. Natural born cavalier. Hell yeah. <laughs> Tell them off anything else you want around here before we head uh, out. I kind of just want to do a quick perception check in the uh, contraband room, see if there's anything else. Alrighty. Especially all the paperwork. Yeah, Dagon was everywhere. looking for smokes or booze. 14. 14? Uh, it's a manifest of a bunch of folks that they uh, captured and put into cells for you know, just making sure. There's a bunch of uh, fey creatures in here. One of them tells that they tried to capture someone who called themselves Madame Giggle Splinters, but she somehow escaped and no one knows how. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. I just had <laughs> that to Ezra. You might get a kick out of this. <laughs> Says that she was fa the, mo the next day she was found escaping on an undead deer into the woods. Yeah, that sounds like her. Well... Unfortunately, they... Uh, there is another uh, bit of information on this piece of paper, though, that you find interesting out of everything, is that a uh, Draugr was seen being placed down here and then being let go because they were too afraid that he was getting sick and violently sick, enough that they had to bring him... They had to transfer him over to the hospital inside the town. And then beyond that, his paperwork is taken out. And by Draugr, I... I under dwarf. It's a, yep, under yeah. dwarf. And... Red, red, red colored mohawk and beard combo. Huh. Does it say anything about which, where he was taken? Like just the, the hospital in town? Uh, that was the last bit of information they had. It did, they did start to be suspicious about the serums at the first point, because this is the first account that they ever seen him with it. That he had the green vials with him. Okay. All right. I share this information with Eloy. Does this sound familiar at all? A, uh, a red-headed dwarf, uh, possibly, uh... It says on the paperwork that he called himself Scrung. Ah, oh, hell. This... Ah, oh, hell. I can't believe they turned Scrung into a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've used uh, aliases before, and this uh, seems like a pretty clear and cut, very likely story. Man, it's like he wanted us to know. If, if we came across this. It's like <laughs> it's like he left this for us. Well, anyway, we have an idea of where he might be, but we gotta deal with this first. Kind of folds it up and just places it in his pocket, ready to have this information to go, should he need it later. Dagon hands uh, Ezra a torch as he's stepping out of the tower. Would you like to do the honors? Oh, I'd love to. This is where we'll take a break. You got it. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. We're on a different camera. There we go. Ah. Welcome back to the table. Woo! All right. So you guys head outside. Uh, or what are you gonna? What are your plans now that you know that the tower is completely clean of uh, folk? Once, once everybody is outside, I would. Yeah. Dagon handed him a torch as he yeah. walked out. Uh, there was a bunch of flammable stuff that had spilled all around that nest up in the main room, right? Yep. Okay. Probably stand a good few feet back and then toss it into the doorway. Yeah. I was originally thinking if I wanted to start another fire in the basement, but burning this up should spread it around. I mean, yeah, it'll at very least explode. Yeah. yeah. Taking, a, taking a step back. Yeah, same. Just make sure my <laughs> guy is not just in there. 
All right. Uh, I'm gonna roll something. I need everyone to roll me a one d one hundred. Oh jeez. Hold on. Uh, Seventy. One. Thirty-four. Woo. Sixty-seven. Twenty-four. I rolled the ten. I got a rock. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, so yeah, uh, everything you watch as the entire building starts to get set on fire from the inside. Uh, a couple of the mortar shells begin to explode, breaking little holes into the side of the wall, going up the uh, going. Up the building, up the building, up the building, until finally it reaches the mortar up at the top. You didn't need any of that, right? <laughs> okay. Just Ch as you asked that, the entire top of the building explodes. <laughs> I hope you didn't need anything. Well, at least I'll know what happened to the tower. Saves me a trip back. I'm glad you look on the bright side of things, Katamov. That, that'll help. That'll help. What can I say you are rubbing off on me, Captain? <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be the first. Man, uh, now in hindsight, I wish we'd just, like, turned around and walked away all cool-like instead of hanging out to watch it, but nah, nah, it was worth it. What's the point? It. You need to be able to watch it to appreciate it. It's true, and it was really cool. It was like that... <laughs> if you turned around and walk away from it, for all you know, it never actually exploded. No, it's like a giant pyre... Could've, Stretching out there. The explosion actually spreads the mist away from the entire building, enough that you could actually see the ceiling of the next floor up. Wait, what the hell? <laughs> like above the forest? Yeah, like you okay. look up, it's no longer forest, and it's no longer sky. You see the ceiling moving on into the upper floors of the palace. Wait, oh yeah, that's I... right. This is all one giant palace, isn't it? Holy yep. shit. Yep. The moment that happens, Charlotte kind of like hits the floor on her knees holding her head. You, you, you all right? You okay? Ah, uh, that was not the knight's voice that just screamed at me. And the mist closes back around her and she stands back up, like, rubbing her face. Okay. I was going to say, this tower is very dangerously built. I mean, this area feels very hollow. Yeah. And, like, if something would have pushed the thing that's holding up in the middle, it just tumbles everything down like a... Maybe it's just around the... Maybe? I don't know. There's a... You, you pretty much know that there's a support beam in the center that holds <laughs> up the entire thing and then... The outside, like beyond the uh, beyond the city limits, like of the outer wall, there's that protective barrier that protects down below. That's also around here that holds up the wall. So it's like there's an invisible wall that holds up the uh, outer rim. We got magic casts. So if that main pillar in the middle is damaged, would that wall be able to hold it, like forever? Hmm. I mean, it'd probably be a bad thing, but it wouldn't collapse the entire thing down on people. Wouldn't be an instant collapse. There might be time for them to try and get some makeshift supports in there, but, you know, mm -hmm. not a permanent solution, I'd say. To be fair, that magical barrier is being held, I'm also, since Keldemov's kind of here, and I'm like, you know. <laughs> yeah, speaking for him. Cause, cause, and, I, and, I, and, yeah. I do, and I do apologize that that's kind of what has to happen at this point. Yeah. That, that's kind of bullshit and a lot of, and really railroady, <laughs> and even that this hurts me. Hey, his character knows things that uh, the player doesn't. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, to be fair, the magic that's holding this place up is from the, the palace itself, so, like, the princes and anyone of the royal family who has any sort of, like, ways of magic is the reason why all this shit's still working. Okay. Okay, then. Well, that's that's pretty convenient, so stuff doesn't fall out of the, st the sky and kill you unless somebody's already dead. Yeah, so somebody has to die, and then that pillar needs to for, break, and... For it to fall. And it's everybody it. below gets crushed. <laughs> Rocks fall, everyone dies, literally. Anyway, to keep that from happening... I uh, look to our, our new small friend. What was his name again? I'm, I'm sorry. Gorin. 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 Yeah. yeah. Gorin's just watching this whole thing. And you like see him pick up a rock and he throws it at the at the flamed building. Good riddance, you bastards. Yeah. By the way, buddy, you see that 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 big giant tree thing off in the distance? I point to Jillian. Oh yeah, that's new. Yeah. She. That was our friend. She had too much of the green stuff, and blue as far stuff. as we can... Actually, no, I don't understand what or you're no, saying. You, no, you were, you were, you're right. It was the blue stuff. As far as we can tell, that's the good stuff, and that's what happened to her. So, yeah, maybe stay away from that red stuff. We don't even know what it does yet, but the probably green nothing good. stuff made our friend here uh, have a burning mouth for a while. And that was like a teeny yeah, little drop. It took like a taste. So, you know, 
I'm gonna go ahead and say that all three of those vials shouldn't be drank by people. Probably shouldn't exist, honestly. Hmm. Now you want some water? I got. I can. I can share you out of my water skin. I think that no, will. No, I'm. No, I'm. I'm quite good. I kind of grab some other. Some of my other things from the confiscation box. Pulls up a giant bottle of rum. There you go. <laughs> okay, I feel much better now. Anyway, uh, you're. I guess you're technically free to go. But if you want to come with us, we're probably the only people who will stand up for you in these woods. Uh, nah, I, I kinda got, I got something I could do on my own right to keep myself safe, but thanks for getting me out of there. Maybe, like I said, if you, uh, happen to take up my little offer and you're able to get to my bar, it's just off the riverside, I should be able to give you a little bit of help. Does your bar have a name or any sort of, uh... Yeah, the little brown jug. Little brown jug? Little jug. Brown jug? Uh, any, any big landmarks that I should be aware of to, to know exactly where it's gonna be? Oh yeah, well, there's a, well I I tell you there's a something that guards the water in there. You don't want to step inside the water, and unfortunately I even can't get to my own bar because the Fomorians broke down the bridge. Oh yeah, I guess that would be a bit of a damper on business. Mm. So I'm gonna have to find a long way to go around. Maybe there's another place up north or south that I could find to get across the river. You don't. I'll just let you know, friend. Don't go in the water. All right. Do not go in the water. Well, I saw there was some water earlier that The had clump the... is there, and you don't want to see the clump. Is it like a dead horse thing, or is that something else that we had to Nah, it's with? like a giant salamander thing that just eats anything that goes inside of it. And a terrible Eddie Murphy sequel. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll keep our eyes on the water then, and uh, make sure we don't go in it. I guess safe travels, friend, and hopefully you that whole Yeah, you too, as he like, wraps himself around with his cloak, and he disappears. And you hear like little. God, I love when you, people can do that. You hear little pitter patters of footsteps go off into the woods. I mean, I can do that. I just seems like a dick way to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll always remember. <laughs> it just leaves such an impression when they exit. Anyway, <laughs> I had no idea what the fuck he was saying. You couldn't understand that. Not oh, a, oh, not God, a I'm word. Sorry. Not a word. Ah, it was nothing. Nothing too exciting. He he owns a bar though. The bridge is out. But... Jump in the water. <laughs> Also, don't go into any water. <laughs> Apparently, water around here is scary. It said there's something called a clump in there, and it doesn't sound like something we want to meet. Fair enough. So, where to now, Captain, now that uh, we've investigated this tower? We've solved the mystery of the tower and blew it sky high, so hopefully anyone who had any questions know has their answers. Do you roll perception check? 21. He doesn't see you, because he's still flapping about, but you can see the bird man off in the distance. Hey, remember that big bird boy? He's over there. Maybe let's move in an opposite direction from him. He's kind of investigating the exploded area right now. Yeah, I guess we should... We probably called some attention to this area, and nothing in this wood <laughs> seems to like us other than maybe giggle splinters. Mm -hmm. Looking above you, you can actually see the mist like transforming almost a little green as it hovers over. I don't think it likes us. Hey, uh, so a quick thought. Actually, let's let's move away from here first before before things start getting mad. Uh, do you have any idea d directions as far as this portal thing that we're looking for? We we found the tower. Well, one sec, sorry. Yep. Okay, it's back. <sighs> you're you're sort of the big man on campus out here. You mentioned the gate was broken, so we're going to need to figure out how to put that back together first. True. And it is in the center of the dark wood, so I suppose we should just keep going east until we find the ruins of our sanctuary. And maybe we can find some of the remnants of the gate there. Sounds like a plan. I like it. We'll start heading east. All right, so which way are you guys going to go? Back the way we came and then east at the last fork, I'm guessing. Maybe maybe some of the king's men, even all the king's men might be able to help us. Does he have any horses that could help us put it back together again? <laughs> no, Eloy, he doesn't. <laughs> he can't spare a soul. That's why we're out here. <laughs> also, he's a baby. I don't know exactly how much he has so to he might spare. The king is eight years old. He may be familiar with the Oh, the next one, though. Yeah. As of right now, uh... So we can head out yeah. past Mama Giggle Splinters to the east, and I think there's one to the northeast there's a, here. There's a path to the north, too. 
So, currently in front of Giggle Splinters, uh, you can continue going east, you can go northeast, or you can go north. Well, northeast seems like a good uh, middle ground between north and east. It's, you know, essentially hitting both sides. Works for me. All right, Very so well. move your characters to the edge. Right there, very well. I will reveal the next area to you. <gasps> With bated breath, I look upon. It is an open. Gl- it is an open area. Nothing. Uh, though there is one tree that is completely different to everything else around here. The leaves themselves almost look like uh, a very like almost meaty substance. Almost like if you press it, if you could squeeze it, it almost feels like a sponge. This is that dark purplish kind of leaf uh, tree that's sitting right there. It's hanging low to the ground. Uh, it's kind of covering the entire area. Touching it, like I said, you feel that exact same texture. Uh, there are a couple of leaves on the ground, so you could just pick them up and investigate them as well. The bark itself almost looks like it's oozing out sap, but a very dark red sap. Hello, did you used to be a person with thoughts and feelings and hopes and dreams too? <laughs> just, hi. <laughs> I used to as well. <laughs> anyone it is blocking your path however you can get around it but uh you don't know what that will require it does look like it's taking up space um like is it this thing in front of me or yeah it's that purple tree i'm and... going oh, sorry. sorry there's no space in between these other trunks here uh and there's a little bit of a space that leads up this way <clears throat> and there's a little bit of a space that leads this way all right that sounds like a good way for keeping towards, going east towards that way all oh. right I need you to roll me a athletics check with disadvantage because the sap is raining from the tree. All right. That was a 12. The sap adheres you to the, uh, adheres you standing still, so you're kind of like stuck in place. It's burning some of your cloth off. Beware. Look out for this stuff. Sap's a little acidic. Uh, careful. Also very, very sticky. (laughs) I need to... Icky, icky, icky. That is three points of acid damage you take. All right. You Uh, actually, you actually got, you guys watch as Dagon is actually like, not of his own volition, he's sliding across the floor closer to the tree. Hey, are you... Might want to get further away from the tree if you don't like it sap so much. Athletics with disadvantage. No, I'm afraid I really like it now. Um, <laughs> eight. Looking you, at it. You oh, are, you, you f- it's so fucking weird. You feel like you have movement in your body. You just can't do it. You almost feel like a tree trapped in your roots. Hey, uh, r- real quick. You, you feeling okay, Dagon? Uh, yeah, one sec. I'm going to pop open some of this plant killer potion and just huck it at this fucking tree. Roll an athletics with disadvantage to try and move your arm. All right. 11. <laughs> nope. Can't reach it. Cannot reach anything. Well, Captain, it's been wonderful serving you. Hold on, Dagon. Wait, jeez. Just don't... <laughs> Don't give up the ghost just yet. Uh, The red sap that's coming out, does it look anything like the red vials we have, or does it seem like it's very different? No, not at all. It is completely different. It looks like it's just coming out of the tree. Hmm. And and if you look at the leaves, uh, when investigating the leaves, uh, pressing them actually releases that sap as well. Okay. Yeah, this this red stuff seems like bad news, so I'm going to... Heads over (laughs) towards him. Uh, Got any of that green stuff that you can throw at this thing? Uh, hold on, I gave, I think I gave uh, Charlotte just about all the all the vials I had. But That's real inconvenient. She hands you one. Hey, thanks. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna just take a look. In, taking a look at uh, Dagon, does he look any different with all of this? Uh, he he, he looks him? like he's covered in this really thick red alish goo. All right, well, uh, this stuff seems real acidic, so I'm not going to apply it to you, but that tree seems like it's got a nice big old surface area. I agree. (laughs) I throw the vial at it. (laughs) 
All right. Glass we, and all is stuck against the wood. Now we let it work its magic. Just you wait, Dagon. Did you open it? <laughs> no. Did you wham, open wham, the thing? <laughs> I'm going to open it creatively, like your captain. Takes aim with his crossbow. <laughs> What'd you roll? Does a 13 hit? Absolutely. Okay, it's, cool. It's a big fat tree. There's hey, you know, no, you're, you're almost right. no fucking I think, way I think you can miss. Meant, I think I'm, you meant I'm, the well, vial. I'm aiming at the vial. Oh, at the vial. Specifically. <laughs> yeah, you hit it. Okay. I mean, it's a non-moving target that's yeah. not trying to avoid yep. you, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your your arrow shatters against the glass, and the acidic nature of the sap begins to dissolve, and it actually hardens and turns to like almost this ashy kind of color. Is it and, then it fall, and then it falls off. Like, the entire acid bit of the tree falls off. But does the tree itself seem unharmed? Just the like tree itself seems unharmed. It seems like you actually got towards the bark. Now the bark is just like this dark red wood. Okay. Dagon? I, yes? This might, this might sting. Because throwing this at the tree didn't seem to... Free you, but it did seem to clear like a layer off the tree. I don't like where this is going, and, Captain. And it seems like you've got a layer of something keeping you from moving. I, I so, understand. We. All right, now here, I'm just gonna do it on one of your arms. I'm not gonna moving. do it on like your face or anything. This is just you know something we can, you know, if we have to, cut it off or something if uh, anything bad happens. My face. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just just letting you know, this is what it's like when someone puts you know, a vial of something on you without you asking. <laughs> Fair enough! Call me justice and all that. I dump a little bit of, not 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 the whole vial or anything, but just like kind of like a little bit of a seasoning of the- uh, Roll me a medicine check. A little. Yeah, it's like, just on, a, on a his- A dash. On his, there, there's, there's Ezra with the fucking, uh, with the salt thing. You mean this? Yeah, yeah. You said oh. medical? Yes. Uh, 19. 19? You apply it to an area where most of the sap is kind of like applied to the joint of his arm. And with that, you actually see the sap turn into that that ashy kind of substance and then just fall off and you feel movement in that side of your arm. Oh, right. Okay. Yes, I can move my arm now. I point, I point, <laughs> I point. Chick, shoot this fucking thing. <laughs> I cast Eldritch Blast on the tree. The Eldritch Blast does uh, escape from where the eye of uh, Chick used it's to be. his mouth. Yeah. Blah. So it, it kind of like opens up, and you watch as the Eldritch Blast shoots out. <laughs> Amber's around it. It's, wait, it's, so the tree, it's a magical force. So the tree caught it? The tree caught the force and made a giant amber around it. <laughs> what is this tree? You actually see the sap burn from the inside. Like, you see it bubbling. Like, it's actually still working, but it froze the magic in, in time. It's it's like it has this... Like, anytime something alerts it, the amber... It's an amber alert! Oh! I get it now. <laughs> Not today. Thank you. Well, either way, we've, we've got oh, more it's of still, this. No, it's still working. You see it bubbling on the inside. It didn't go away. The magic has been procced. All right. Mm. Um, you can still move well, your arm. With, with my with my second Eldritch Blast, I guess I'll fire at that amber that's currently holding the first Eldritch Blast. All right. Uh, roll me the damage. All right. For both. For of them? both. Okay. You will get, you guys watch as like the bubble just gets bigger. Like you know how glass blowing works, where like you put you puff into the middle and the thing expands. Yep. Yeah. It's like that, except the Eldritch Blast is condensed in the middle of it, making a giant orb. You always going to get a fish out his tarp and throw it over himself <laughs> in case there's some splash. Twenty five total damage. Twenty five. That breaks through the middle, and you watch as the Eldritch Blast kind of like opens up, like it makes the amber look like a mouth and it splashes over and goes over your head, so now your upper torso is free to move, and then it kind of like, like a, like a frozen in time splash zone stops right in front of you. Your, your, your lower part of your body is still encased in amber. I'm confused as to what happened. So the Eldritch Blast fired out, but it was like, it basically made like a bubble. Instead it made of a bubble out. and okay. enough of the damage made the bubble gotcha. okay. rip open. So now you're able to move your upper torso. Well, this is a bit better. Um, Dagon, look towards the tree. I'm looking at the tree. There's an eye looking at you. Chick, shoot that fucking thing. Also, boonk, <laughs> throwing it right at that eye. Which, what are you throwing? 
Uh, I'm, I'm throwing the green goo. All right. Roll me to hit. To hit with a throne. Do I add my dex? Uh, yeah, but I was wondering if I had my proficiency to a throne vial. Uh, probably not. I'd count know. that as unarmed, so. Or uh, uh, improvised weapon. Okay. In that case, that is a uh, 17 to hit. 17? That absolutely hits. All right, cool. I smack it square in the eye with a whole vial of this green goo. The eye closes down on itself. The entire tree begins to sway as the acid is now bleeding down from where the eye like slit was. Nice shot. This is the part where you let me go. Oh, it does. It lets you go. <laughs> so just the sap just kind of melts off him. Yep. Hey, good work. All right, now we'll carry on through. I think this thing knows who's in charge you now. You carry the inferno with you! It says it's celestial. Oh no. Did you catch <laughs> any of that? Yes, it seems to be very mad that I carry this shit with me. I speak back, I speak back at it. Yes, and you're an annoying little shit who's trying to stop my progress. Care to taste another one? More leaves are falling. <laughs> Is this like a tree's version of tar and feathering, I ask in celestial? Trees are getting, uh, leaves are getting stuck to your body. Yeah, we, should, right. we, we should probably move. Captain, step back. <laughs> I was waiting to use this, and you know what? A plant is a great thing to use this on. Everybody, please step. Hold on. How many feet back? <laughs> well, I need everyone to roll me a deck save. Okay. I'm trying to move through these falling leaves, oh, I'm guessing. Jesus. I have to look through this. Oh, hey. Modify 20. All right. 22. 10. Eloy and Charlotte are stuck in the leaves as they begin to am as they begin to leak amber. Now I did have my tarp over myself. Does that give me any kind of extra protection Roll or an advantage? Okay, <laughs> that's what I was angling for, but didn't want to say in so many words. Seventeen. Your tarp is getting heavy, and you just throw it off you and jump away. Charlotte is now stuck. Hmm. I will move you appropriately. Yes, please. There you go. Okay, it's just a single creature. Good. Uh, I thought it was AOE for a second. Uh, I look straight at this tree, the eye that I just burned, and I cast Blight on it. Ooh. Blight. Druid, sorcerer, warlock, wizard, necromantic energy washes over a creature of your choice that you can see within range, draining moisture and vitality from it. The target must make a constitution saving throw. The target takes 8d8 necrotic damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. This plant has no effect on undead or constructs. If you target a plant creature or a magical plant, it takes the saving throw with disadvantage and the spell deals maximum damage to it. Oh, 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 nice. Very well, Good very choice. nice. I, I, you know what? What's fun about that, Nick, is I planted this thing just exactly for that. Cool. <laughs> I figured we were fighting with sentient plants. I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll use this spell. Yeah, it's not, with a, a six won't help it. A six will not help it. It takes eight squared damage. <laughs> Roll 64. that damage. Yep. Yeah, well, it's just, it's max damage, so that's 64 damage to it. Yeah, so that spot where you really, where the amber was, like, caked away from it, you watch as that eye disappears, like, it, like, turns, like, the moisture is ripped out of it as Dagon kind of, like, holds Chick out towards it, and... Dagon, like, uh, Chick's mouth, like, opens up, and you watch as the water and any other, like, yeah. liquid is get getting sucked into Chick's, Chick's mouth. Yeah, Chick's getting himself some sip. Uh, you're watching as if life itself is being, dr being drunken away from the tree. That eye, you actually, like, hear, like, it screams out in pain, like, oh, wait, no, I can feel this, why? No, shit, fuck! Bye. <laughs> It is frozen, <laughs> and you watch as it slowly starts to slide off, and there's like a crater where once the entire part of that tree was, and it hits the floor. The sap no longer is sticky. Like a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was... killed it. <laughs> well, that was nightmarish, but it got us out of there. Is uh, Charlotte freed from the amber now? She can. She's still covered in it, but she can move. Okay. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to all of the plants! I yell out in Celestial. You hear howling off in the distance. I think they heard you. Is that a, 
I don't, I don't think plants howl. I didn't think they tried to encase us in sap and turn us into other trees either, but... You see, that seems more like plant I mean, behavior I, it than is howling. closer. I mean, you've made your... Now you can walk past in either of those directions with free movement at this point. Right, well, I'm already close to this one, so I may as well <laughs> reveal what I was close to. Mm-hmm. All right. Reveal area. Beep. You are out in an open glaive that has way more paths to walk through. All right. Well, let's... You hear the howling come from the north. Seems like a good enough place to check as any. I mean, yeah, we're trying to get deeper into these woods. And clearly any signs of life might point us towards another thing to kill. <laughs> <laughs> more things to clear out of these woods. Uh, I will say this, though. Everyone roll a perception check mm -hmm. when you step into this uh, part of the glaive. Ten. Oh, wait, no, twelve. Blade. Sorry. Uh, twelve, you said? Yes. Okay. Uh, ten. Twenty-one. Fifteen. Eloy, you can, you can, like, based on your knowledge of all the stuff that you've done back when you were in the uh, druid ways of your friends back home, mm -hmm. You see smokestacks from like huts off of the distance to the uh, east of you. You can see it through the uh, part in the trees. Hey, you guys see that? Civilization, maybe? Hmm. Looks like like people fires, not like the forest is on fire it's fires. It's like a campfire. I look over at Keldamop. Do you know if anyone else was supposed to be in these woods? Besides the natural flora and fauna, and the gnomes. And the gnomes at this point, no. I think it could be more gnomes. It might be. A gnome home. <laughs> well, we don't want to leave those gnomes all alone up in their home. We should go check it out. Yeah, we should throw them a bone. We should go roam to that gnome home. Just kill me. <laughs> <laughs> now come along. <laughs> all right, so which way are you guys going? We'd head towards the smoke. Uh, which... It was to the, directly to the east. Oh, to the east, east now. Okay, the howling came from the north. Howling came from the north. The smoke is coming from the east. All right, we'll check east then through this small yeah. little howling cutting between like these trays. Howling sounds don't want us around. Oh, that's all the more reason to go after them, I think. In, in my opinion. All right. Uh, from where you are, Dago, I'm going to stop you right there. Yep, stopping. Yep, yep. I was going to just say, like, from right here, you guys can move into before I say uh, what's okay. going to happen. All right. Da, 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 da. Wait, where's Ezra? There he is. He's back there behind so Keldamoth. There he is. All right. Occupying the same spot. All right, so is this the uh, is this the order you want, or do you? I'll let you change order at this point. I'm, es I, I'm essentially, well, actually, no, I guess Keldamoth is the real tank now, but. I am going to swap places with. Charlotte. Okay. That's okay, the thing I'll really change. stand next to Dagon. All right, we'll okay. swap with Eloy, unless Eloy, you want to move somewhere else. Yeah, no, this looks fine. Okay, so Keldamov and Dagon step forward. You're not completely out of the shrubbery just yet. Like, you're now entering a more open space, so you're starting to see cliff sides dip downwards. Uh, you can see a small yellow, uh, like, straw hut off of the distance. It's quite large. It looks like it can house maybe all of you, if not... Like, it's probably, like, the size of a barn, but, like, it's made out of straw and it's a yellow hut. There is a campfire off of the distance. However, you do see, uh, you do see other forms of, like, formation. Like, there's log piles, like, someone has been out here doing a lot of lumberjack work. Uh, there's a lot of axes hitting into the wood, a lot of them crudely made. Uh, there is a rather large person, there's a humanoid, a rather large humanoid figure you see squatted down in front of what appears to be the fireplace, and they are very large, they have a lot of warts growing down their back, their arms and legs are extended out. You can't tell how tall this man is just from where you're standing right now, but you can only see the back of his head. He has a ponytailed, very dirty, messy hair, white hair that goes down his back. And he looks like he has a bunch of scars and a few weapons sticking out of his body as he's sitting there, kind of just like kneeled over and kind of like knuckles on top of the floor as he looks at the fireplace he's made and he's poking at it. Yeah, but that's know. about as much as you could see. And 
based on perspective alone, this man's way taller than what he appears to be. Well, you're the official here. Hmm. Mm. Mr. Large took to the wild way better than I expected. Oh. <laughs> Let me uh, grab a token for this man. If I do have the token for this man. Ah, well, for now, you don't know what's going on, so we're just going to put that there for a second. And I should actually enlarge him to his proper size. Booyah. Captain, I'm going to guess for Morian. I mean, yeah. He did say they were the big fake creatures. He does not notice you right now. Hmm. Um, do you want me to shoot him, or should we try talking? I mean, I would prefer if we talked first, just to know. How far away are we from the uh, tree we just left? Like, how far have we traveled? I know that on the map here, your, I'm gonna uh, say your you sense travel, of scale is a little different. I'm going to say you traveled at least, like, a good 20 minutes. Okay. So, a decent walk. I remember what the gnome said, though. He's going to want you and me, like, special for slaveries. <laughs> My, that's well, if, why we're standing back here. Probably Charlotte, too, the, since she's an elf. Yeah. If that's the case, maybe we could set him off guard by... Well, before I move, I want to try and do one more perception check, see if I can see any more details about this person. Go for it. So. Get a good look at him. 21. 21. Uh, he has a great axe that's sitting on the side of his belt. Attached to the side of his belt as well are two giant, like, car piece, like two uh, bodies of caribou that are uh, strapped to his belt. Mm -hmm. uh, he's kind of wearing, like, a a very, really ragtag, pieced together cloth that looks like a mixture of cloth and leaf. Around his shoulder is a, a metal piece of poltroon, kind of just, like, very hackneyed to put together, like, almost like it was a very bad... Uh, a very, uh, like a piece of a house that he just strapped onto his shoulder. Uh, you do see next to where all the wood is, there are cages that look like there are supposed to be like puddles of blood and bodies on the inside of it. You can't tell from so this I, distance. I look at that cage. Hmm, there should be some blood in there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I kind of said that wrong. There I, know, is, I, I get you. There is blood on inside of it, but it also looks like there was like a, like a, bit where things are supposed to be stored in there. Like, it's almost like shelving on the inside of the cage. Hmm. Well, we can pretend to have something for sale and then catch him off guard and murder the fuck out of him. Well, that is one way we could approach this. However... He has not noticed you just yet. His back is to you. I'm just saying, the longer we sit here talking... I, I know. I, he, he, he just looks like someone surviving in the dark. What I mean, if any... Not for so long. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like someone surviving with this bloody cage. Uh, he looks like he's been in combat with several other people. I don't imagine the wild animals are using these weaponry. You watch as he takes his arm and picks up what he's looking at. He has, uh, he has on a stick, like skewered through it, a wolf. That's what he does. And he's roasting it over the fire. I don't. But the problem is, I don't see any fay here. I, I, I look over at them. Well, regardless what you guys decide to do, I'll cover you. Dagon's actually going to go ahead and hide as well. Well, feel free to go speak to him. I'll let you know how this goes. <laughs> let me know how it goes. Yeah, if you guys want to move. Uh, Dagon it's stealths like Homer Simpson style into the bushes. Ooh, with a, uh, I don't know, I thought that was a 19, not a 17. Do, 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 still a modified 20. I stealth with a 15. All right. 25. Do you want to stealth? I Homer Simpson into the nope. shrubbery. <laughs> no. All right, well, Charlotte's not taking that chance. <coughs> Come on, talk to him, big man. She just she just makes it to mm the 14. I got to roll for this man, too, if he's not going to hear you guys. Not one. He's, he's fucking <laughs> he's deaf to the whole thing. He's convinced by this fire. He's chewing on wolf. Okay, I'm, I'm going to... Wumpus not think it ready yet. I feel bad killing him. He has a cute voice. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to kill him right away. You never know how so, we gotta get to know these things before he's, we murder them. He's literally got loot sticking out of his back. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do... Don't know why Grumpus was so mad at Wumpus. Grumpus only mean because he found shiny rock. Wumpus found shiny rock. Then he took shiny rock and said it was his. And then he made Wumpus come out here. We're getting his life story. Yep, that's about as much as you get. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to cautiously kind of play it as if I'm using 
my hammer's like my crutch to kind of walk over and calmly be like, uh, <coughs> be a, I can't believe I'm doing this. Hello there. This man turns around. His face looks bony as shit. His eyes are sunken in. His nose is five times longer than his entire body. And he has a beard that goes from like chops into giant santamon all the way down to his crotch. The entire front of his neck looks like it has rope like that was attached to it and like burnt across his neck. Mm. He turns and looks to you. He doesn't get up. He just looks over <laughs> and he sits up by his knuckles, turns around and looks to you now lurched over. You could guess by the way he's lurching over and looking at you that if he stood up, he'd be 12 feet tall. Mm hmm. So this is how the normal mortals feel. Hello. Everything all, all right? I saw the smoke. Wampus not seen you before. What you? I'm an elephant. What elephant? Uh, mm, it's gonna be one of these conversations, I see. I... Is that Faye? No. He le he's like looking down at you leery-eyed. Roll a persuasion check. Okay. He like, like one eye squints, his good eye, the other one's dead. Oh, Lord have mercy. So whatever I get is what I got. A 13. He doesn't have very good wisdom. That was a matching number, but he has a negative two in wisdom. Mm. Yeah. Thank God I have plus three in wisdom. <laughs> okay, then if elephant not Faye, what you want? Um, elephant lost. Elephant tried to get to gate. Have you seen the gate deep in woods? Why you speak like that? <laughs> Wampus, you making fun of Wampus. Were you making... <laughs> <laughs> Wumpus no go to vocabulary understanding school to be treat like this. I'll have you know, Wumpus English professor at NYU. <laughs> now let me ask you again. I just Wumpus kind of uh, okay. Bearing that aside, he just goes. Wumpus understand you. Not need speak like that. It's unfortunate <laughs> that Wumpus have half of mouth busted open from Grumpus. Who's Grumpus? You don't know. How do you not know? Grumpus is the main person who is making us attack the gnome folk for food. Hmm. He, he doing all the fun. He's, he's talking to all the other folk that aren't Faye. Wait, are you part of them as well? Did the other... Oh, Wumpus understand what's going on. Uh-oh. He is convinced at that. Oh, you here to make sure Wumpus doing good job. Well, you tell Grumpus that I'm doing the bestest job out here and that he is the bad guy and I'm the good guy and I should get promotion. Aha. Uh -huh. And you should give Wumpus all the trade deals now. Me, me, captain of enterprise at this point. I will make a note of that. Um... So besides Grumpus, have you seen this gate I'm looking for? I'm a little lost. Dagon's gonna wander out of the shrubs. Ah, oh, there you wandered off to. Wait, oh, oh. who he, oh, he with you? Yes. Persuasion. Shit. <laughs> I look over, I look over at Wumpus. Are you doing your job? You have got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> on that one. Yep, it was about to hit a 19, and then it just toppled over to a one. Natural wonders. Mm -hmm. All right, he's not, he looks at you like, all right, he looks nothing like you, so obviously something's fucking up here. He then looks to you. Roll a, roll a persuasion. Why are you looking at me like that? I say in a very stern voice with a persuasion of 24. You beat him out. He, he's about to like, he's looking at you just like, wait a minute, is the food tricking me again? The fey magic always do. Oh, 
He's like, not he, food. He's he, one of my underlings. He hears your he hears the seriousness in your voice that he that clicks in his head like, oh okay, no, I gotta shut up. Like Wump like Grumpus and everyone else with the other the uh, trade markets are exactly like this. Grumpus was under s extreme orders to meet with me hours ago. Where is he? How how, I, how should Wumpus know? Wumpus last saw him over by river. Oh, over by river. River to north, river to south. What um He's like, he's like, Which way? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Just give me a second. <laughs> Just give me a second. That away? He points east. He ha he's looking like down the path. He's essentially pointing towards. That's when last Wumpus saw him. Fair enough. I'll have to find him later. So, what have you been doing here other than cooking dog? Well, d this me lunch break. We we're making sure that all the other gnomes don't make it out, so they don't tell the guard anything. Where is your Where is your patrol scheduled? Where Where are you hunting? Well, I was here to watch this outpost. Everyone else is either up north or up south or up east. They're all over the place. They at least they they put up camp near the river so the gnomes don't escape. Mm. Excellent. There should be a few defecting fae joining us in a moment to help us hunt down the remaining gnome threat. Oh, okay. If, if I catch gnome, will you, will, uh, can I expect to give gnome to you so I could get paid? Of course. Why do you think I'm here? Do you have any? I, I mean, he like looks through the cage and he pulls out the corpse of a gnome woman. I have this. Set it down. It's, she's like, she's been torn in half. And she looks like she took like a nice punch to the face, like a solid crunch. Her neck is snapped back. No, well, people know no subtlety, do they? They are worth significantly more to us alive. You realize this? Yeah, but this is Grump this is Wumpus' first time out on the field. Yes, well, Wumpus, you are not doing a particularly good job. If you want that promotion, if you want to be paid properly, you need to do the job that you are assigned. Oh, being on the outside of the caves was real hard business. Yes, but it's the decision you made when you decided to leave. Wait, are you Drow? No, 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 I'm better than Drow. What's better? Oh, wait. And he like looks to you, he like lurches over. He takes your arm and lifts it up and looks down at you. How come you no have spider leg then? I don't need spider legs. I pull my Dagon trigger. and my skeletal, ethereal wings spread from my back, and he has to make a charisma safe. Oh, good, his worst stat. <laughs> With a two. Yeah, he is terrified of me right Ooh! now. Compare me to the drow again. <laughs> oh, be sorry, be sorry. I, just, I thought that would be honor, I'm sorry. As he's, as he's cowering in there, this seems like a, a good time for me to try and cross Stealth. So yeah, I'm gonna try and like stealth over I here. I did also mention that there were some defecting Fey, so if you did pop I, out. I heard that. Yeah, that's true. That's the that's plan B. <laughs> Goo! We might be doing plan B. That's an eight. Roll with disadvantage since he's not He's kinda terrified. Yeah, he's kinda yeah. kinda pissed afraid right at this point. He sees the he sees leaves in the back move, but he doesn't actually notice you. But he's too he's too scared about the fact that there's now a man with giant skeletal wings out his back looking at him. He's obviously familiar with the Celestials, so probably not my kind though. As my kind never makes it this high. Look at me, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he's he's confused. He actually uh, he compared you to an Underdark race, and mm -hmm. he he said something about how. Being out on the surface is a lot more different than in business than it is being up, uh, being down below. Uh, you make it by without with just enough ch enough enough time that he doesn't notice you. Oh, all right. Uh, Charlotte is gonna attempt this. <laughs> no. Charlotte is not the stealthiest girl with a nat twenty. He sees her immediately. Ah, there you are. Finally, you made it. Like, Charlotte looks to you just like, Yes, yes. We're supposed to meet here in order to keep traveling, but that fool Grumpus is keeping us waiting. I, 
I can't believe that Grumpus would leave us to, like, would let us be so late with our schedule. As she, like, kind of, like, walks over just, like, looking up at this guy now just, oh, God, that's so fucking gross and terrifying. <laughs> like, she's trying so hard to hold in the fact that she's dead set afraid of this thing. Those blades in your back, Wumpus, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are those bothering you at all? Are they impeding you from doing your duties? What? Hold on. He, like, scratches his back and pulls off a piece of his, like, skin and looks at it. Oh, no, that's fine. Thanks for asking, though. If they're impeding you from doing your job, I want to make sure that you can do it properly. Bring them alive. Oh, okay. Uh, we try to do alive. You see, the problem was is that last gnome threw big, big, giant magic light thing at face. It didn't hurt. It, it, it kind of stung, and it, I mean, my face feels fine. His entire side of his face is black and blue. Ezra starts stealthing with 14, also trying to get by. I could maybe I mean, talk my way through this, but I'd rather just... I mean, Wumpus was also it. trying to take care of those giant flying things with mouths on their chests, and then also the dogs that could speak. Yes, kill the flying things on sight. I have not witnessed many of these dogs. Okay. Well, I mean, they're all out and about because I ate this one. Hmm. You want peace? What'd you roll? Uh, 14. 14? He does not pay attention to you. So, I'm gonna say, like, anything to the north up here, you guys pretty much are clear. Alright. And tell them off, you're still standing there. I take, I take off my dagger and cut off a haunch of wolf. <laughs> Appreciated, Wumpus. Perhaps there is a place for you at the table after all. Oh, good. I, that'd be great. But I don't... only if you get results. <laughs> we will have this conversation again. I hope it goes better. Now we are off to find <sighs> that fool Grumpus. Okay, well, like I said, Grumpus, I don't, I, last I saw him was by camp, but he could have moved up and down the river at any point. Well, we shall find him. Okay. Um, do you want Wumpus to stay here and keep guard? Wumpus, you are meant to go out on patrol. Find those birds, take out those birds, and find the gnomes, but bring them back alive, for God's sakes. Also, the stones. Are you familiar with the stones? Stones? Yes, the large frag- The gate fragments. Your Me people were assigned to hold them. Me no- Hold- mm. Wow. Nat 20 Oh, you you mean green tingy that used to be lit up and then we took apart? Yes, that. Oh, well, um, Wumpus saw Grumpus take it one time and he hid it somewhere. I, I don't know where, but th that was when I was forced to go on patrol out here. All right, well, continue your patrol. We'll have to take this up with Grumpus. Okay, well, if you want to actually go back to big stone thingy that we took apart. It's a little bit up th this way. He points north. Hmm. Excellent. You've been of good service, Wampus. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I, however, shall be acquisitioning your home. What? Oh, just for purposes of rest should this take longer than I anticipate. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I mean, I, I guess you can sleep here, but why not sleep in caves that you, you made? Up north, to the, up north the river, you, got, you guys made house for your secret meetings. Yes, yes, but I tend not to dwell with the others. Okay, well, I get that. W Wumpus have that feeling too, not, not feeling like he don't belong in the same place with others. It is not that I do not belong, it is that I... They don't belong with me. Wumpus like way you think. Continue thinking that way, Wumpus. We'll be on our way. Come along, Keldimov. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I dropped the cripple act. Just <clears throat> So, you guys are pretty much over here. You guys up here are over by the ledge, uh, the ledge side that leads into another path. Uh, you, however, Keldemov, Charlotte, and, uh, Dagon have gone this way. Oh, so we split up a little bit. Yep. Let me right. reveal the maps for you guys. 
This is what you guys see. And this is what you guys see. So you take, another take. one of those another one of those really fucking weird trees that you fucking absorbed before. It, you're right at a fork in a road that you could pass by it just fine. However, these two see a pathway that leads to the north, and there's shrubbery to the bottom that kind of cuts off the path. I did mention to Wumpus that we'd be heading north. North toward the river, right? Uh, the ri Well, he says that the river is... You can't miss the river. Keep going this way. Keep going east, Keep going you'll east. find the river. Okay. So is there no, like, what, what is this block, like, this black... Thing that's uh, cutting us that's off. That's a that's a tree. Okay. Can like I guess you. If you want to roll a uh, if you want to roll a acrobatics check to get by. Well, I, I just thinking like you know be able to see the tree. Oh sure sure sure. Yeah, because it's just like right now it's just a wall. There we go. Um. All right. So so we can't pass like straight through to them. Uh, no, because we... this this tree is in the way. Gotcha. And it's thorny bramble as well. So I can't go around like behind the hut to try and meet back up with them. Unless you want to get seen by Wumpus. Gotcha. Well, what I can do is I can just shove Chick into this tree, because right now, uh, for at least the next, I don't know, minute, I'm still uh, <laughs> dealing out necrotic damage with every attack, so I can wither this, wither these brambles to make them easier to pass. All right, roll me a survival check. Survival check is a 14. 14. Yeah. You cut your way through. You cut a path just fine for everyone to meet up at the, up at the top here. And as we step up here, my Dagon trigger fades. Hey, <sighs> nice work back there with Wampus. Quite the uh, negotiator. Do my best. All right, well... The only clear path you guys have is either going through that path you just made down below or going northwest at this point. So, Can I hear him say that the stones were this way? Uh, the stone was hidden somewhere by the uh, Grumpus character. However, uh, we did also, get, I'm not sure if you were around for this part, we were able to gather a bit of information that the uh, possible conspirators are hiding in a north like north of the uh, river ah. in some caves. Well, they would know what we're looking for, but nothing says they're going to talk even if we find them. No, but I suppose if we're doing the job that we were hired for. We can at least get rid of them. <laughs> that is a plan. All right, so which path do you guys want to go? We're heading towards where we were directed. There are caves that pe they're using as meeting rooms. So the only path you would have is northwest at this point. Yep. And that's the way we go. All right, let me reveal this area. Uh, you're seeing some more gnarled giant trees that kind of like loop over into archways. Uh, the more you go up this path, there are more of those uh, sticky trees. You can still avoid them, but the entire surrounding area is just like condensed with these trees. Uh, as you cut this corner though, however, I need everyone to roll a perception check. Mm -hmm. Lord help me, I'm beginning to miss the desert. Perception, you said? Yes. 16. 10. 12. 18. Mm -hmm. Roll for Charlotte. Six, no. Uh, Keldamov and Dagon see more humanoids just peeking out of the trees just to the distance. You hear a lot of like actual like cracks of whips and a lot of other people moaning off in the distance. Come on, come on, keep on moving. Get in the cage. Oh, well, I believe that might be our, well, one of our possible <laughs> grumpuses. Mm-hmm. This sounds like someone who I don't want seeing me. <laughs> With a nat 20, I stealth like a, just invisibly back into the. Yeah, you just kind of blend in. So since you got a nat 20, I want you to move any place that looks like it's concealed. So, hold on, where, where did I hear the, the voices come uh, from? They... To the nor it's to the northeast of you from that point. Northeast, all right. Uh, I'll be right here. Is this like tree line right here? Yes. Okay. Then I'm just right here watching, making sure I can see everything. All right, let me reveal, and let me put the tokens in while we're doing so. Uh, 
Do, 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 do. Where is my enemy token? Ah, here it is. All right, this boy here. Huge lad. Mm-hmm. That's a Fomorian. Here's a Fomorian. And do to do to do, do one more Fomorian as well. They're for me and Fomorian. He's smaller. Oh. <laughs> oh no, he ain't smaller. You thought he was a Ferlesian, but no. <laughs> I'm assuming this is another situation where we've walked a fair distance away from Wumpus. Yes. Another 15 minutes have passed since you walked away from Wumpus. Uh, the four characters up in the top there, the NPCs, uh, those are all gnomes hidden away in cages. Uh, these other two are being, uh, not really blinded, but so much, but, like, just grabbed and being shoved and being whipped to get into the cage along with the others. Uh, the two that are free at, technically free at this point on the outside, uh, one is an elf, a male elf, probably looks around the same age as you. Uh, and the other one is a small gnome lady. Uh, they look like they're wearing, like, your typical, like, hey, out in the woods, like, woodsman attire. So, wood elves, like, their civilization and their, uh, culture, this looks like what most of these people are wearing at this point. Uh, they look pretty battered and beaten up. The one, uh, the elf lad is actually walking on a, uh, on a stubbed up leg. Like, looking like he's missing his foot, and he's hopping along. <laughs> There's some pretty brutal stuff happening over here. Dagon's gonna sit out on one of these branches here. Careful that, don't bruise the merchandise. The three Fomorians turn and look towards you. I'm gonna ready in action. I just have my crossbow ready if any of these things look like they go to attack. It. Yeah, these, uh, they don't look as submissive as Wumpus did. They look a little bit more battle hardened and a little bit more angrier. And I, just I, who I, hell are you? Who hell am I? <laughs> who hell. I am here to oversee the acquisition of the merchandise. Excuse me. God, fucking allergies. Don't ever have them. Man plans. God sneezes. I know, right? That that's that. <laughs> it's stupid how that kind of is like the indicator that shit's about to go down, and I hate that that's the case. <laughs> Who hell am I? Who hell am I? I'll have you know. All right. When Gustav have one of you along with him. When Gustav decide that it would be smart to have somebody who know area. Roll persuasion with disadvantage. Ooh, even with disadvantage, that was a 17 and a 16, making it a 22. He, they both, they all kind of like look to each other and start murmuring something about like how you look like a drow and how this like doesn't feel like it's a. This doesn't feel like something that Gustav would do. Uh, but they, but do they, are they saying that in their own language? Yeah, they're kind of just like gurgling that to each other. At one point, you see the elf man try to like see like an escape route, and he tries to hop away. And the one one Fomorian like just grabs his claw Actually, hand down. If I saw that he was trying to make an escape, I would shoot at the ground in front of the elf with my gun. Uh, your gun fires off, and all the Fomorians look over to you, almost grabbing their weapons, and then look down at the elf as he's trying to scramble away. Keep your eyes on the prize, gentlemen. Sheik. He tried to get away a third time, yeah? Oh, that not do. They pull out a they pull out a cleaver. Do not damage the merchandise. What your name, friend? You not one of you. You look like one of Gustav's, but not Gustav. What your name? It's rude here. to ask. <laughs> so that's why I'm asking you. It's rude to ask without giving one first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell me 
same stranger and I'll tell you mine. <laughs> if you must know, me, Gash, that Jilg, and that Nerg. <sighs> None of you are that fool Grumpus that I'm supposed to find then. No, Grumpus is at, uh, Grumpus was sent off to caves with Gustav. <sighs> Have to meet with them later. We taking these, we, we taking this merchandise off to the camp. Gonna sell it off for a good price back home below. Hmm. And they'll go for much better if they are undamaged. Well, we tried not to damage this one, but this one kind of did it to himself. Got himself caught in bear trap. They are fools like that, aren't they? The elf is looking at you just like, what the fuck, what are you doing, why, what? It, they're just like so convinced that now like this is just it for them. The woman is crying like sitting on the floor. Fagon's good at making women cry. He hops down off the branch and just kind of like walks over, examines them. The Fomorians kind of just like look to you. The moment you start getting closer, they like kind of guard the merchandise. Just like, we still not see you before. <laughs> you no touch merchandise, it's part of our deal. This I'm is our food. Do that I, is yours! Do I look like I am touching? You're getting close. And you are testing my patience. And we are three bigger than you. Ooh. Intimidate. Versus your insight. Oh, my, oh, okay. They're intimidating you. They're trying to intimidate me versus my insight. Man, I'm trying to measure my cock over here and they're just... <laughs> They're just looming. <laughs> uh, insight for me is a 19. They got a 23. That's n You might want to step the fuck back. It is three 12 foot size men with giant elongated limbs and weapons. And you are just but one person at this point. Performance check though, I'm going to try to maintain my composure. That is a 23. Your composure is kept, though you know it's probably not a good fucking idea to step any closer. Hmm. You have met, by measuring each other's ego, you both have kind of just like said, all right, we're at a standoff <laughs> right now. Easy, easy. Basically, I'm just trying to stall for you guys to set up some sort of trap or <laughs> yeah, something. So, so while let's this figure out what, you're, you, what you guys have been doing <laughs> while, while, while I've been doing this. While this is going on, what do you guys do? Cap, my, I say I just I just go googly lights on these three boys, try and try and shut them down. We grab the hostages and run. I like that idea. Let me see if Charlotte has anything as well. I look over at the big Luxodon. You've got anything that you could use to scare them? You've got some magic spells. Not not so much showing yourself off and getting their attention, but just making them run away. Hmm. Let me see. Actually. I do have something that could be a good, bless you, by the way, good yep. diversion. Let me just read this real quick. 20 foot radius sphere. I'm scared. Hmm. Like Dagon's ready to I jump into battle if need be, but if this can be yeah. settled. Yep. <laughs> Charlotte kind of like looks down at herself and she's kind of like clutching onto her Vlasbeth pen, uh, pendant around her neck. And she's like looking to you all. I have something, but even I'm afraid to use it. I don't think, um, I don't want hostages or anyone who could possibly get hurt be caught in the crossfire. All right, well, my, my thing just makes people go googly. A couple of hostages will, will, will probably get caught in it, honestly, but it's just a little, just a little boop, 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 tap, 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 bring them right up. She, she like looks to you. I might have something to help you out with that as well, if that is your plan, but what do you have, Mr. Keldemoth? Well, I could create a sphere of fog to help the hostages escape, or I could, let me see, could summon daylight, and cast shadow. I'm going to say we get the, we get your illusions going, maybe get some fog if things start going bad, but otherwise you just keep a lookout and you blast anybody who doesn't get tricked by his, <laughs> by his, uh, his confusion, confusion if, if that, if it comes to that. Our goal is to get, a, get out of here without killing somebody. But uh, if we have to, these big guys can, they'll go down eventually. Mm -hmm. This might take some work. What do your abilities run on, both of you? Uh, mine is up against their wisdom save. Let me see here. 
Anyone, anything in particular? Like... Well, no, because Charlotte tells you that she has enhance ability as a level two spell. Okay, so were you asking like for a okay. component or like which like what stat? stat? What okay. stat? So for yeah, Eloy, it's probably charisma. Yeah, mine it's... is wisdom. So, who feels unconfident about their ability? <laughs> Here's the thing. If his goes off well, we don't have to worry about him. Mm. So I'm going to say we boost Eloy. Yeah, yeah. like if that... If Eloy's works, we don't have to worry about Keldamob doing anything. Yeah, we just need to... It only lasts a minute, so... Like, in character, yeah, I can only keep it up for so long, so we will have to hurry, like, grab those hostages, get out. But I think I can hold them down for, I don't know, a minute? All right, and let me just check something here. It's ability 5e... Level two slot. Yep. Uh, creature you touch gains one of the following benefits. Bear's endurance, bull strength, cat's grace, eagle splendor, fox's cunning, or owl's wisdom. Well, fox's cunning would be the... Fox's cunning is intelligence. Owl's oh, wisdom really? is wisdom, and eagle splendor is charisma. Huh. Ah. Okay, then yeah, eagle splendor would be the thing that would boost the, uh, yeah. the All right. DC. She will burn a level two slot and grant... Well, actually, no. She can do both of yours at the same time, by the way. She huh. has she has enough that she could probably do. She has three slots in level two, and so far she's only casted. Yeah, she's only cast. She actually has not cast any of her level twos yet, so she can do both enhance ability on both of you if you need so need to. Would that use two okay. slots though? That would use two slots. I would opt just to do Eloy's personally. Yeah. All right. She then you watch as she latches onto the eye symbol on her neck. She starts muttering in some weird, unknown language. It almost just sounds like gurgling mumbles to, to anyone else. And then all of a sudden, that gurgling mumble turns into, like, her saying, like, giving you a blessing of some sort of, like, she's saying, like, may you be may you be splendorful as though of the eagle. And then, whoop. <laughs> Splendid and like then, a <laughs> eagle. <laughs> and then she takes her hand off it. It has the symbol of an eagle on it, and she taps it on top of you, and you feel way more charismatic than before. You have now have an extra plus two to charisma. You're now the regal eagle of the crow zone. <laughs> oh, no, the last one of our friends has turned into an eagle. Things did not go well for her afterwards. So, so you basically, know. you have an extra plus one to any of your charisma things. Including your saving throws, I'm guessing. Yes. Your save DC. Yep. yep. This includes checks and uh, saves. That's the best thing about enhance ability is that it touches up your stat, not just a save or anything. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a hypnotic pattern. I just drew the uh, the square there, so the two uncaged NPCs <laughs> will get caught in it. Uh, oh dear. Yeah, there's just no avoiding that. But like I said, we can spend a turn to just slap them awake and get them to come with us if it all goes well. So basically, Dagon takes the step back, it's like. Yep, and yeah, as you're stepping back from the from the Fomorian. <laughs> they each, uh, everybody in that square gets a wisdom save. All right. Versus DC 16. All right, Fomorian 1 fails, Fomorian 2 fails. Huh? Fomorian 3 fails as well. All right! NPC... Succeeds. Oh. Wow. NPC. I mean, these aren't the wisest things. Uh, the crying gnome lady fails. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I can only keep this up so long. Let's go. Let's get him out. All right. All right. Dagon's going to step forward and shake the lady awake. Oops. You're free to go, by the way. I say to the man. <laughs> she looks at you. She's like quivering. Like, well, no, I say, I say to the man, you're free to go, by the way. And I shake the lady awake. You might want to take her with you. Uh, I'm going to roll an insight for the poor guy because. He shot at him. He's kind of like a little frazzled. I run over to the cages. Uh, Dagon's paying him no mind. Roll persuasion. Mind. He's okay. I'll, I'll roll persuasion for that. But after that, he's paying no mind whether or not he takes it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, he's not even trying to put up anything here. But persuasion is a uh, twelve. Goes back he, over to the he cages. He was very hesitant at first, but he beat you out by one, so he's able to piece it together quite well. He finds he finds out that this is a ruse, and he looks up. He's not charmed by the magic. Elves are have a bonus against charmed magic. So he looks Ooh. up and he's like, "Oh fuck this." Okay, and he like pats the gnome on the on the shoulder and like gets her up and tries to hobble away. Uh, so, uh, by the way, try to avoid a grove to the south. There's another one down there. All right, they kind of like head over this way. So for all intents and purposes, they're out of combat. Mm -hmm. Though everyone else in the cage is now looking at this like, "What's going on?" 
We're just breaking them out one after the other. I'm yep. assuming you're going to lock pick. Yeah, I was going to say, I run over the cage. It's not, a, it's not a lock so much as it's just a giant wooden cage. And since there are giant Fomorians there, no one wanted to contest that. So. All right, so we'll just cut open one of the edges of the thing and just let them all run out. Yep. Move along. Try to avoid the south. There's more of them down there. <laughs> all right. You guys get most of them out. There's one small girl who's sitting in the corner crying. She is not moving. Well, this is not my cup of tea. Somebody else wants to handle that. I'm going to try to figure out how to fuck these boys up when they wake up. All right. Hey, sweetheart. How, what's your name? She does not answer you. She's, she, this, this girl looks like she's run through the ringer. She's got whiplashes down the side of her arm, down the side of her neck. And she also looks like she has a couple of stabs and like just punctures where her other arm is. All right, it looks they, like you... they've had their they've had a a oh, really oh, bad time oh, with this girl. Gotcha. Hmm. Well, it looks like you're you're really hurt. You wanna you wanna get on you wanna be big and strong and ride on my friend here. <laughs> just I I go over to try and pick her up. Donkey back ride. Let's go. Let's do it. Roll a persuasion check with disadvantage. Uh, twelve. Come on, we're gonna get you out of here. Through her, it, through all the bullshit that she's been through, like you, you could, like she looks up at you. She looks like she hasn't slept in weeks. Her entire fate, like she looks like, she just looks like she's been bruised to all hell. Mm. Uh, she looks up at you and she's not trusting you worth shit. She is not budging. Here, I'm gonna okay, move I over. Can... Let me make sure. Da, 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 da. Okay, I am going to actually cast Healing Word on the child to see if we, I can gain her is trust. Is that a touch? Or is that, I, I don't know, Word is uh, magic. Healing yeah. word, a magic. Healing Word is from like 30 feet. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, roll your health. Let me see here. It's D4 plus the spellcasting modifier, which is a six. She heals for seven. She looks up at you and sees that you're a giant, like, woolly man. And I'm going to roll a knowledge for her real quick to see if, like, through all the fear, with a nat 20, through all the fear, she remembers that based on your garb alone and based on the fact that you're a giant elephant man, she's just like, wait, the sun guard's here. Th this is the people that my fault, like, she's just muttering to herself, oh, daddy was right. You are coming. Daddy was right. I, I, don't, I don't know where I am. Please help me. It's all right. And I... You go to lift her up? Yep. You pick her up without incident, and she clings on to you. Mm-hmm. You're joking me, sweetheart. All right, we're going to need you to move. These guys are going to wake up. I know, I'm moving. I'm yep, moving. you have one more. Like, I'm going to say that took up two turns of time. Yeah, so I'm... I'm going to say Dagon's, like, working, like, trying to do something while all this yeah. is going you, on. You, so you guys took up that two turns of time. What are you doing in those two turns? Uh, Dagon probably would have thought about it for... A second. Oh, by the way, standing in the middle, like where the people were standing, uh -huh. there's a broken gate. A broken gate? The oh, entire so the, the oh. gate. The gate is there. The entire. Oh, part, okay. The top of the gate looks like the entire midsection was just ripped out. Gotcha. Okay. Well, now we know where that is. Uh, Dagon came up with the ingenious plan to like how are how are these guys staring like? Uh, they're looking up into the mist right now as if they're seeing one of the flying bird monsters and they're kind of just like, like, how do we take care of this? What do we do? Okay. Um, because the only way to wake them up is if I attack them or try to, like, jostle them awake, right? And by then you have, I'm going to say, three more turns after your first mm -hmm. two before they wake up by themselves. All right, because we saw what that plant regenerator potion did to Jillian. Yeah. So my I was, theory was... I was along those lines. I was going to see... Yeah, I was just going to try to like dump some of that in each of their mouths as they're looking up slack-jawed. Uh, that would require an athletics climb to climb up them. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is really the delicate matter of it. Mm -hmm. But waste not, want not. Mm -hmm. All right, so which one? Fomorian boy, one, two, or three? I'm going to go for the one that's furthest away from all of them in case this causes a commotion. That's three. Yeah, so this guy over here. Um... <laughs> Athletics to climb and hopefully not wake him. That is a 21. The guy's kind of like moving the more you, like the moment you're like grabbing onto his like weird fucking grotesque warty body, but he's not, he's not paying attention. He's still looking up in the air. I'm just going to like set the vial like between his jaws and uncork it so that any movement will just dump it down his throat. Okay. Roll medicine. 
with a sleight of hand thing. Uh, medicine is a 14. 14. All right. Careful. Operation. Well, it's not. The medicine was to make sure it doesn't get on you gotcha. while you're doing so. Is it water on the knee? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the doctor for you. <laughs> it's a Charlie horse. Uh, this completely goes down his throat. I'm going to roll something real quick to see if he reacts. I accidentally dropped the whole vial. Na yeah, nat Oops. one. You drop the whole vial down his throat. He doesn't react, but it goes down. All right, we'll see how that turns out. I'm going to go work on the other one. <laughs> Actually, he'd t probably take a turn just to, like, watch and see what happens. Uh, well, you're on his shoulder right now. Yeah, I know. He'd use his move to get down. Uh, okay, roll in athletics again. Just to hop on down, I'm going to take uh, 21. You Again. do so. Wow. 15 is being favored tonight. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, so that took up two turns. You're now below him. Uh, nothing seems to be happening just yet. He's still looking up in the air. Hmm. Ooh. Are there any, uh, like, seeds or anything on the ground? Uh, that would be a survival check. All right. However, I will say you are noticing that the complexion on his body is starting to go from purple to like a dark gray. Hmm, interesting. Uh, survival check for this turn, that's going to be a 19. Uh, 19. Like just an acorn something, something that I can huck down these guys' throat. There's a pine then, cone. Okay, I'll take the pine cone and uh, on my next turn, I'm gonna climb up this dude and drop the <laughs> pine cone, kind of like try to get it down his throat a little bit and pour the uh, elixir on top of that. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Let's, so that's number two. Then. Yeah, down here in the middle. Yep, number two. So, athletic check to climb. Yeah, this is all while you're like just chatting with this, <laughs> having this sweet moment with the girl. I'm climbing this guy in the background. Uh, by this point, you guys can enter into the scene as well. Uh, this athletics is a 18. This one was a lot more hard to do. Like, you're grabbing onto this guy's He weird... doesn't have as many warts. Oh, no, he does have warts, but you grab one and one of them kind of like bursts open a little bit. Yeah. Oh, these gloves later. Uh, enough that it doesn't snap him out of it, but you're able to keep climbing. Okie dokie. Now, uh, can I sleight of hand to get this acorn in his throat to a point, or this uh, pine cone in his throat where it's not going to wake him up? Yes. Sleight of hand. Ooh, that was a good roll. Uh, sleight of hand is a 22. <laughs> He's still there. <laughs> and then I'll just do a little backflip off him. Athletics. Backflip. Might have twisted. Oh, no, never mind. I thought that was just a nine. Uh, athletics. 20. 20. From the height you're standing, you kind of took a little bit of fall damage because of how high he was. Oh, rough. 12 feet. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna roll that real quick. I just wanted to make sure that whatever tree didn't grow out of him is uh, not gonna fuck me up horribly. Oh no, you're you're fine. You you escaped just fine, but the problem was that you landed. You kind of twisted your knee. Stick it's all the, the way down <gasps> for five points of damage. Ah, that really hurt my ankle. Uh, so what were you guys doing at that point? As uh, he's he's now climbing dude number two at this point. I'm going to. I'm just gonna roll a quick reception. This will decide somewhat what Ezra does. Do I see him dumping the, the liquid down this thing's mouth? Perception. Uh, that would be a 13. Unfortunately, no, he's too high up. Okay, so I won't have the idea to use the to use the serums. So I, I have a And I which serums did you use, by the way? Uh, I used the blue one. Okay. Like, both of them were the blue one. The okay. one that killed Jillian. Yeah, one he just gave him the drink, the other he... Gave him something to grow. Yeah. yeah, the other one has a pine cone <laughs> slowly becoming a pine tree in his stomach. Alrighty. Uh, Actually, rapidly becoming a pine tree, I suppose. Ezra, on the other hand, um, gets a similar <laughs> idea, just perhaps not quite as maybe brutal. We don't know. Uh, remembering what he did the last time a big enemy had a big illusion on him, he starts stuffing fireworks <laughs> under the feet <laughs> of, of the other... Uh, Sleight of hand. He's gonna get so pranked. Exactly. Uh, that is a 21. He does not notice. His right. foot is now encapsulated in fireworks. Great. I'm gonna step away from that and just wait for my... <laughs> and just wait for these things to go off. 
And now that those are there, I'm just gonna tiptoe back and just ready a firebolt once it seems like he's waking up. <laughs> All right, uh, Eloy, what are you doing for these? Um, do these guys also have like stuff stuck in them, or are they just like uh, like? No, nah, it looks like uh, old Wumpus seemed to have a couple of things stuck in them. These guys just have a bunch of scars and shit on them. Do they have any weaponry on them? Yeah. Yes, one dude has a uh, number one has a great club. Number two has a slab of steel, which I'm just going to call a greatsword. And the other one doesn't look like he has any weapons, but he does have two cows strapped together on a stick. <laughs> two cows on a stick. <laughs> Fascinating tool of these. Hmm. Uh, one thing I suppose I can do is I have two vials of stomach acid. If there's like a gap in their hand, like the way they're gripping their weapons, I'm going to try to like slide the stomach acid in there so that when they wake up and grip it, they'll I just... will say you have enough time to do that to one. All right, I'll do that to the one with the giant greatsword. Okay, that's number two. All right, the one I was just by then. Perfect. Yep. Actually, no, he's the one that's going to have a tree growing out of him. Yep. Uh, which one has, uh, which one has like, the... The fireworks? That would be one. Yeah, fireworks. Okay, so what what is he holding? He's the one holding the great club. All right, I'm going to try to slide it into, like, a little gap in his fingers then. So sleight of hand. Sleight of hand is... Plus 18. Hopefully it sticks, and now we wait. Oh, you put it in there just fine. Uh, however, unfortunately, by the way you opened it, it kind of... Oh, I didn't open. I'm just holding it in there because I'm assuming when he snaps out of it, his initial reaction would be to grip. Oh, okay. So he'll smash it himself, <laughs> covering right. his hand in acid. And this is Ogre's stomach acid, by the way, for yes. case of I'm not sure... What Damage distinction? Question mark. Yeah, I I don't think I'm gonna do anything too fancy. I think I'm just gonna ready my short bow to take a pot shot when these guys wake up. All right, tell them off. What are you doing? Well, I want to make sure that the uh, child is with the other, uh, with the others escaping. Uh, yeah. Uh, you and Charlotte kind of usher everyone away from the fight, so they are technically out of combat. Okay. However, the kid is still latched onto you. Uh oh. He's trying to get back. Yeah, I'm just gonna kinda hang back real quick. I mean, Charlotte looks to you and is just like, hand it off to me if you need to. Would you mind? Hold the hand out. <laughs> All right. Go with the nice lady, sweetheart. Roll me a persuasion check. Uh oh. That ain't gonna happen. I rolled three. Would you believe in miracles? Because I rolled a one. Oh! I was going to say, Dagon would have jumped in like, Leave or you'll die! <laughs> just oh, intimidate Jesus. the poor yeah. thing. I just poke my head yeah. like, the poor, right, it's her or them. The girl, like, Charlotte kind of, like, remembers back during her time when she was in the con uh, the convent, and she starts, like, cooing, like, nice, soft, gentle words for her to get off of you, and she does so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me just check. So that takes up two turns for you, and you get back enough to... Like, you ushered them away, mm -hmm. you got her off, and then you getting back in there, I'm gonna say that takes away two out of the, mm -hmm. out of the, out of that turn. So now you have two turns to do something before they wake up. Two turns to do something, okay. Uh, oh, that's going right back, there we go. Uh, okay. I am just going to ready my storm hammer, but also cast something new. I'm gonna cast Spiritual Weapon using one of my level two slots. So now I have a spectral version of my hammer within five feet of me. Nice. So. Cool. So yeah, the only question mark we have, I mean, we have a uh, number one, or number, yeah, number one here that has uh, fire at his feet, so. Oh, the, let, me, let me go ahead and click these real quick so I can show you. Like, yeah. Uh, da, 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 pan view. At least I think that's what it is. No, it's select and move. Uh, this dude here is one. Okay. This dude yeah, here. Yeah, you, you can you, you can actually marker them with uh, little dots. Yeah. So I'm gonna move Charlotte over here, so she's out right now. She's mm -hmm. making sure everyone else is still safe. I'm guessing that NPC up here was it's the girl. three. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. That's that's also why I was like, wait, why isn't that token? Move? She's fine. She's fine. Ah. And this guy's number three over here, so. Yeah. He's the one with the potion in him that we're not sure exactly what's going to happen. He's the one, uh, this one down here is the one that's going to that's have the one. tree growing out of it. Red is one. Red is one. Red is one. Computer. Computer, click. 
Max, am I right? Blue is two. Okay. And green is three. Okay, so out of all of these, I'm pretty sure number two is the one who I'm most confident is about to fucking die. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number three is the one that's like, this could go either way. Yeah. yeah. Number one, he's just going to have some hot feet. If I had noticed you using the vials, I would have dumped the acid down his mouth. Mm. Jeez. <laughs> but since I didn't see that, I was like, no, Ezra would be more in prank style than murder style. Okay, at this point, you have a few seconds until the entire magic dissipates. Uh, and with that, they start waking up. Hey, what the fu- what? Dagon's gonna pretend like he was in the middle of it too. Huh? Huh? What did you idiots do? What did we do? What did you- They turn around and see all three of you. They ready their weapons. Okay, so the one who would grip his uh, great club all of a sudden hit the acid would go off on his hand then. Gonna roll something for him. Roll con save. Oh, they have really good cons, but a four doesn't help. Probably not. <laughs> uh, so he grips and his entire inside of his hand singes. Also, just so you know, I did say I was readying mm -hmm. a firebolt <laughs> toward, yep. towards the guy who... Uh, who Th had all the him. dynamite at his feet, so if he started moving, I would immediately shoot him for... Shoot his feet, you mean, yeah, like yeah, with the uh, fire? Yeah, yeah, shoot at his feet. Uh, with a... A 15. Well, that hits. Yeah, cool. All right. I, and, I assume it would. Yeah, and then the acid did... Uh, the acid did... 15 points of acid damage. As his hand Straight is no, to his hand. His hand is no longer usable because it, it, it burns to the fucking bone, so he can't even use his weapon. This Ow. Guy, his hand is like, ah! <laughs> 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 what the? Whoa! There's <laughs> that uh, explosive bolt there. Um... <laughs> so roll damage. Or fire bolt, Chuck right? Joe yeah, shit. <laughs> A little different than the explosive one. The explosive yeah. one had a delayed timer. Yeah. Go ahead and add your uh, sneak attack damage, too, because this is all fucking coming on him, too, sweet. Terrific. Uh, so that's just... Oh, great. Perfect. Max damage on that dice there just for the uh, the initial hit, not even counting the bonus. That's eight. Uh, plus the plus my <laughs> proficiency, so that would be 11. Or wait, no, 12. No, it's, no, it's, just, uh, it's just dex. You're just oh, adding you're, dex. You're dex. dex. Okay, so yeah, that, so that would be 11. So, 11 plus, so 17, 18, 23, and 29. <laughs> 29 points of damage exploding off his feet. And then the fire bolts go off. Yeah. <laughs> or then the fire, and then yeah, the yeah. explosion and then the goes off. the fire works. <laughs> Explode. I wasn't given a damage value for those, but. I have those. Let me paint you a picture. <laughs> paint away. What's good? Huh? <laughs> His entire leg is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Falls over. We're under attack! I yell. <laughs> So, his hand is still burning with stomach acid. He, his leg turns into a stump. He grabs the bloody wound and makes it worse. The shock from the entire- all of the pain from this- all of this shock and awe just completely just makes him fall over dead. Hooray! There's one! Yeah, and I'm guessing you want to roll initiative. <laughs> We don't know what's happening. Or, or are other there two. any other special things yeah, that there, go Yeah, there are still other special things happening. <laughs> yeah, those other guys had some big drinks. <laughs> a couple big gulps. Now one of them has a tree in his tummy. Yeah, that one, uh... <laughs> you hear Celestial coming from in his gut. <laughs> hmm. Did you say something? I didn't say it. <laughs> You watch as like roots and leaves and fucking like branches are poking out of his chest slowly. Oh. Growing out of his mouth, he's grabbing his mouth, trying to gr like rend the tree out, but he's pulling out flesh with it as well. Oh. Out forms a pine tree. Oh, tannenbaum. Oh, tannenbaum. Merry Christmas, everybody, from the Natural Wonders. <laughs> <laughs> and because the mist is raining in, he's tall enough that the mist is actually seeping into the tree. There are celestial rings wrapping around the top of the tree. Hmm. Uh. 
truly is a Christmas miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, the guy who you just put the thing down his throat. Our control group, if you will. Yeah, our control group. <laughs> yep. Number three looks to you. He, he readies his two cows on a stick. Rolling a con for him? Burble, burble. Clenches his heart. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Looks like he's about to have like 15 strokes. Throws up blood, hits the floor dead. Oh, Light wrote his name in the death note. Good. <laughs> ah. <laughs> coincidence. And now we can all sit around the Christmas tree and just have a nice campfire. <laughs> sit around the portal. <laughs> yeah, sit around the portal by the massive tree. You know, we should make a celebration of this day. <laughs> a day of a day of saving these people. <laughs> the guy with his leg stub. I'm in a catastrophic amount of pain! <laughs> Bang! <laughs> Whoa! Ah. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> That's where we'll stop. <laughs> what a happy festivus. Happy festivus to all. <laughs> you accelerated his heart rate that he had a heart attack. <gasps> Please, I'm dying. Shh. Yep, a little quicker now. Bang. <laughs> ah. Good job, boys. Look at that. See, see how, see how quick, uh, fucking, uh. God, what's that? What's that spell called? Uh, like, hypnotic pattern. Hypn hypnotic pattern just ends a fucking combat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good shit. Weapon. Good shit. But we ain't done. We ain't going on our break just yet. Uh, by the way, little little bit of a note here. We will be on break for the at least like I I get back on the third. So yeah. I think the yes. next time we'll be doing this proper will be the eighth. Yeah, I think yeah. so, cause uh, cause next next week's Christmas and the week after that is New Year's, so yeah. holidays. Just kind of gone out of town. Uh, those of us that are in town, I mean, if yep. anybody wants to throw together a one shot, they're able. I'm I won't be here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you, but expect the return of the wonders uh, in two on weeks the eighth. from now. Yeah, expect yeah. expect the return of the wonders on the eighth. But before we bid you a holiday adieu. A great, a great way to end that holiday, by the way. Just <laughs> sitting around the right. Christmas tree with viscera that's and gore. That's with, growing with, out of a Fomorian stomach. Yeah, with viscera and gore dripping around as garlands. That, we got some fan art to look at. That and Christmas I can't wait tree for of might. <laughs> I can't wait for the... Yeah, available on YouTube. I can't <laughs> wait for this fan art, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure we'll have some fun stuff to look at by the time we get back. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And we do want to kind of do like a mini little... Uh, Fan art slash uh, fan mail stream tomorrow. tomorrow since this is the last time we're all That's going to be a kind of to be determined kind of <laughs> yeah. thing. So a lot of you might have to catch the archives. Ugh. But first of all, we got some fan art to look at. And starting with number one, Ooh. we have here by Roseblood Wolf a little a little uh, feral peaches. Should she, <laughs> uh, being the canary in this scenario, find yeah. uh, find herself a little bit too. Uh, Intoxicated by the celestial mists. I was getting ready to, to check her, but since we since we stopped, I was gonna be like, "What's peaches look like?" By the way, we've been diving into this forest pretty deep. All will be revealed in time. Who knows? We'll see. We'll right see. now, she gets to spend a nice Christmas with us yeah. around the gore tree. <laughs> yeah, my Hello, it's me. <laughs> yeah, it is a Christmas miracle. <laughs> Bust right out through the fucking tree. <laughs> Someone grew me. Thank you kindly, Rose Blood Wolf. It looks great. Next up, by the blind artist one, we have a cozy little winter a winter Aww. pillow fort. Aww. Everybody just trying to stay warm. Yeah, it's adorable. I love it. It's called the, the little. It's like so, it's something that uh, it's something in Japan. Yeah. I don't I don't know what they call that. <laughs> There's a that. whole arc where you buy one in Persona, and I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> but that thing sure does seem comfy. It sure does, and look how warm and comfy everybody is. Wake and Eloy drinking their cocoa or tea and Nedra playing with the old kitty. Yeah, Ezra's just napping in the little pillow fort. And meanwhile, the cat's just sitting there. Yeah. Why haven't you killed them all yet? You haven't <laughs> murdered them, Nedra. What's wrong? I'm just so... You are I'm growing just, a heart. I'm just so comfy. You're showing weakness, Nedra. Thank you so much for this adorable <laughs> little bit of Christmas bliss there. Blind Artist 1. Next <clears throat> up <clears throat> by <laughs> Zodiac <laughs> Eclipse, <laughs> yep. whose uh, commissions are open. We have the ghost spooker, Eloy. <laughs> Spooker of the ghosts of Christmas past, present, <laughs> and future. <laughs> 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 
Thank you, know, you so much, Zodiac. You know, technically someone could do a Christmas Carol with most of the fucking playable characters <laughs> right Pretty now. Much, yeah. I feel like you can do that with almost everything. My favorite, uh, just quick around the uh, around the table. Favorite Christmas Carol? Mine's Muppets. Ooh, Muppets. Yeah. Ooh, I was gonna yeah. say Muppets. Yeah, Muppets is I good. The, I, I mean, that's Michael Caine. Mr. Okay. M- Mr. Magoo is a close second because that's my mom's if favorite. You, if you asked me this before, like a couple of years ago when I was still a kid, I would have told you the Disney Christmas Carol, the one where Scrooge yeah. actually is Scrooge. It's actually Scrooge McDuck. I mean, yeah. that one is top yeah. tier. That one's good, too. Goofy is uh, Jacob Marley. That was- oh, that was so fucking good. <laughs> yeah. I was so mad when he wasn't on screen anymore. Just like, yeah. you know, bring Jacob back, please. <laughs> yeah, he, just, he, he came right. out of the door knocker. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you kindly, Zodiac Eclipse. Next up, by Scrap Paper 22, we have Mother Giggle Splinters. <laughs> Welcome to the game house. Now, I wonder who's going to pay us better, the, the little gnome guy or her for these corpses. We'll find out. <laughs> I mean, these corpses are not super intact. One of them is. One of them, them, is. One of them had a heart attack. Yeah, no, actually, that one. Ooh. You just need to figure ooh. out how to drag a 12-foot corpse with us. <laughs> oh, you have that potion of dimion. Oh, wait, no, you used it. Yeah. Didn't do much. Didn't do much. That oh, was well. going to be my I plan mean, if there was I mean, only it one. I mean, it stopped, it stopped her accelerated growth, but it didn't and then stop killed her. inside her for all the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was worth a try, and it's not yeah. like I had any other use for it. Oh, but. no, she would have been even more giant enough that you guys wouldn't be able to pass through. <laughs> Either way, thank you kindly. Scrap paper 22. Always look forward. Speaking of someone I always look forward to, next by MFS <laughs> Arts, we have <laughs> What's Scrung Been Up To? Fuck. Everyone and everything. Oh, Scrung's been up to some fun shenanigans. I can't wait to show you guys what that's about. I'm sure everybody's been having fun in Ray. Oh, oh, trust me. That's what Chapter Five's all about, my dudes. Mm. Visiting mm. the old gang. Yep. Thank you kindly, MFS Arts. I love his face. Next yeah. up, by Hark and Christian, we have this fucking Miura monster of this <laughs> celestial fiend bird. Uh, yeah. I, I expect to see bad things happening to just every female character. Anytime I'm, I'm assuming it has eaten at least three children in certain panels. Yeah, th- this thing popped out in the eclipse, I'm almost certain. I, <laughs> Thank you kindly, Harkin. I assume it's got a weird slithery tongue if it's yeah. up its head flap. Next up by Captain <laughs> Gamer, we have uh, this great little modern piece of Wake, Nedra, and a little DECA-clad business, business cash calliope. <laughs> I love that they made her small enough that she's like, like up compared to everyone else. I'm just like when I describe Calliope as like one of those like tree deer, the one with the little mm-hmm. tiny fangs. That's how fucking small she would be. I know yeah. she's taking a selfie, but it also looks like she could just be like, "Look at this giant I found." <laughs> Are you my lift driver? Taking a picture. <laughs> But yeah, uh, th- I, I, could, I could totally see this like flipping through a gorilla's oh. album art cover. Just I could see this in there somewhere. Looks great. Thank you so much, Captain Gamer. Look forward to more. Next up, by Marvel Poison, we have this adorable little piece of Nedra sitting down, trying to get up, standing on a hair. Oh no, ouch! Yeah, fantasy hair, people. Sometimes it's a real hindrance. Yeah, yep. it's not. It's not great. It's terrible in a zombie apocalypse. Just a little too long. When you're in a zombie apocalypse, fucking forego them sweatshirts. You want to get rid of anything baggy, you are fucked. Yo, I'm if ready you wear for- anything baggy. I'm ready for time skip Nedra, where she's just got like a short haircut, and she is now the this monk focused person. Yo, listen, yeah, she could rock a listen, pixie cut. Listen, I want to see her rock a pixie hair. Yeah, pixie I was gonna mop. say, she could totally do that. But thank you so much, Marvel Poison. It's absolutely adorable. Next up, a little bit more. We got some Sailor Nedra here by the Blind Artist One. By the power of bludgeoning, I will punish you. <laughs> Crunch. <laughs> Punching fools by moonlight. <laughs> Awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Blind Artist. And next up by Soto Sister, oh. we got little peaches here. Just hanging out in the hat, little newt like peaches. Oh, yeah, we had so much peaches on Friday. All, All that peaches. Little leopard gecko peaches. I love it. And the peach train don't stop rolling because next by Eliko Bangarang, <laughs> we got <laughs> It's Peaches. Wow, Peaches. <laughs> Borderlands style. <laughs> Brum, ding, 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 ding. Peaches, baby dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I love how the hind legs are represented to be much longer than the body itself, and it's also doing the kangaroo, like, front <laughs> fucking forward, like, chest yeah. protruding shit. Yep. That's so fucking good. I love that. Charge. And last, but certainly not least, by Tejakuro Tora, we have a little a little uh, comic of Calliope and Oso 
Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Oso. I, I didn't mean to st scare... I just wanted to say hi. Oh, it's okay, dear. Just maybe don't say it so loudly or from behind. <laughs> My ear holes aren't what they used to be. Just little scared turtle boy. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you all kindly. We hope you're having a great holiday season. Remember to take a step back every now and again and relax. And we will see you guys at the table after a couple of weeks. Have a great holiday, Wonders. See you next year.